It is one week from today. One week, you know, around here it might just be, uh, Professor, you're the yawner these days. Why don't, you, why don't you give me a real yawner, a fake don't yawner? Me, don't get me started. Yeah, I got you. All right, so one week from today, Froggy, what is one week from today? Uh, well, I don't know. The 8th? 7th? Dude, come on. What's one week from today? Uh, I don't know. It's too early to think. Mm. Fester, Roxanne, whoever wants to buzz in first, what's one week from today? Gosh, I don't know. I mean, spring has already started. Easter just passed. Oh, come on, guys. Come on. Uh, come on. April 8th it doesn't so, ring a bell about anything. Here's a kick in the head about all of it. Jeez, come I got on, a really? place to stay. I got a place to stay. All I got to do is, is go. Is get there. Oh, oh and I can't oh, get gotcha. there. Okay, I know what it is now. I don't. Obviously, Fester knows what it is. One week from today is... It's, it's the big eclipse. eclipse. Oh! The eclipse is one week from today. Yeah, one week from today. What is that, the official eclipse-like noise? Do you like that? Do you yeah. Like that? Yeah. For our sake, yeah, it is. Uh, should I up. use that as the... Or I was thinking about the... The godlike church music from the Blues Brothers where where Jake sees the light. Do you see the light? <laughs> well, that's ironic because the one thing you want don't want to do is yeah. not you don't want to look at it, right? Or look at it directly. I'll stare oh, at yeah. that as long as thanks, I want. Thanks for that scientific analysis. Yeah, you know, you said that in a tentative fashion, like, is that true? You don't want to look at the uh, eclipse. Directly? Why would you ask? Of course, I, I you said it. Actually, you said it tentatively, like you weren't quite sure. I said it quite authoritatively. No, you because didn't. I said the one thing it, you don't want to do is look at it. No, That's, no, no. It, you, you you asked it in a tentative fashion. Yell it! Don't look at it. Yes, yeah, exactly. You gotta, you gotta get it through to people. The eclipse is one week away. Yeah, if you go online, there's all kinds of like eclipse generator, like. What percentage are you going to get in your area? And I typed in my zip code in South Tampa, and for for us, well, really, it's the the entire Tampa. It's not like it's not like Carrollwood is going to get. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to get 58 percent of the eclipse uh, in South Tampa in my zip code. It's not like Carrollwood's going to yeah. be at 92 percent or Ozona. Is no, gonna, Ozona's not going to be uh, any closer. 99.9%. No, no. The Tampa Bay area, we're going to get about 58% of the sun eclipsed. And the total the total amount uh, for the partial eclipse for us in the Tampa Bay area is going to be about two hours, 31 minutes. And the peak is around 3 o'clock is where the peak is going to be, where the most of the sun is going to be. Anyway, so one week away from the total eclipse. Hey, today's April Fool's Day, so let me right out of the chute. Here at 6.04 in the morning on April 1st, April Fool's Day, let me tell you right off the bat, there are no April Fool's jokes coming your way here on the MJ Morning Show. So no April Fool's jokes. We've never done April Fool's jokes on this program, we won't do April Fool's jokes. So, uh, like the the Seven Eleven deal, you saw that Seven Eleven is introducing uh, different sparkling water flavors today, like hot dog water. Hot dog, yeah, Ew. yeah, dirty hot dog water, sparkling water. Uh, come on, it's a, it's, a, it's a, clearly an April Fool's joke. So and many then, people and then fell for it. mustard and ketchup flavored sparkling waters. Yes. Yeah, but I think they're also introducing like a new lemon lime, and they're introducing real flavors. So I believe that the real flavors are not <laughs> April Fool's jokes, but the Seven Eleven dirty hot dog water sparkling water flavor. I'm pretty much gonna go out on a limb and say that's an April Fool's joke. From <laughs> let me hear your yuck yuckalation over there, Froggy. <laughs> those are the, those are the yucksters right there that's at Seven right. Eleven. At 7-Eleven corporate headquarters, and are they still in Texas? <laughs> Don't know. 
Hey, great news on the duck situation. I saw that. The duck was saved, and it was a twofer. Not only did we save the duck that we used in studio with the, the Froggy Fabio reenactment on Friday. Folks, if you miss Friday's show, let me tell you right now. Yeah, it was a bizarre show, and when I went back and looked at the video, I'm like, you know, this really was good. It was ridiculous, but it was completely actually ridiculous. it was completely s and i but it it kind of worked. It was very entertaining. So if you missed, and Good Friday was this past Friday, so some people uh, didn't go to work. You had a lot of the folks, uh, you know, the kids were out of school on Friday. So if you missed it. The Fabio 25th anniversary duck in the face reenactment. If you missed it, the video is up on our Instagram accounts. It's on my account, Certified MJ Radio. That's Certified MJ Radio. Or it's on MJ Morning Show, both on Instagram. And you can watch the clips. Gosh, will you put up my comparison with Fabio? Oh yeah, and I oh you didn't see that? Oh my nose looks broken and awful. Oh, I took a freeze frame of the video from MJ TV in the studio where you're looking right into Fester's camera and your nose is all bloodied. Oh, look, <laughs> That's great. Look how close I look to Fabio. <laughs> Dude, wow. It is incredible. Yes. It is and then Froggio. and then the third shot, the ducks in the backyard of uh, what was his name? Randy? Randy the listener. Yeah, so hold on. We're going to talk to Randy later on. We are saviors. We are we're very fitting this past weekend. We, the MJ Morning Show, we are saviors of not one duck, the one used in the studio, but a second duck was tossed in by the poultry guy. These ducks would ended up as dinner. Instead, they're pets now. We are saviors of wildlife here on the MJ Morning Show. Look at the good that came out of our ridiculous bit. And if anyone wanted to complain that Fester threw the duck at the froggy's face a little too hard, guess what? That duck lives today. Instead yeah, because of, of that. Yeah, instead of dinner on someone's table. Instead right. of duck Laurent. 6, uh, 608. 608 at the MJ Morning Show. Exactly. 608 at the MJ Morning Show. Let me take a quick break here. We're just getting rolling on a Monday. It's a load. Instead of Peking duck, maybe. Oh yeah, yeah. That's good too. All right, what's wrong with your voice today? I, it's it's. I have some tea over here. We'll get it. I going. like it. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Sexy. Very very uh, very rough setting. All right, six oh eight traffic on with Pat MJ Morning Show back in a minute. Well, here we go.
more cowbell. You oh it's, it's, it's coming it's, back. It's, okay. Oh, it's coming. It's on oh, oh, hang on. It's it's coming back. It's coming back. Now you guys were on out of the room, but when we were coming out of the commercial break and I was going into the uh, NSYNC song, I said that this is a little creepy, but I think Froggy is very attracted to what? Roxanne's husky. Dude, you're no, you're sitting over there going more husk, more husk. Yeah, don't yeah. pawn off your creepiness Dude, on me. You, you just you just. No, essentially confirmed it. I would never say something you like that. Did. It's disrespectful. You're, I said that Roxanne was losing her huskiness just a second ago, and you're like, boo. Yeah. What What are you talking about? The husk is better, I just, just think. He prefers the husk. In a most respectful way, I like the That's husk. A, hold on a minute. Talk, Roxanne. Let me see if it's there or gone. It's gone. It's gone now. What oh. is going on? It's going it's, in it's and out like a light switch. It, it's like an on-off switch. It's, it's gone. I don't know where it went. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> I have no control over what's happening back. to me. <laughs> what? All right, will it, will it come back again later? I don't know. As the day goes on. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> it's, 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 it's coming back a little bit. God, I'm telling like you. Sybil. It's, it's, it's like United States of Terror over here. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was a great show, by the way. All right. So, are you sick? No, absolutely not. It's the pollen. The pollen. No, the pollen's gone. No. Oh, no. It's still, like, it stays with you. Listen, I that... washed my hair yesterday, and I tried to get most of it out, but when you have long hair, pollen is always uh, with you. That uranium yellow cake is not on my car in the driveway mm. anymore, and I've got oaks all over the yard. Starving for so... some yellow cake. <laughs> Are you homeless? What? Is Roxanne homeless? Oh, because what? I just have long hair. She, in the no, place. no, no, not the long. That pollen stays in your hair for... It does. Do you have access to regular... Bathing facilities? No, I don't. No, no, you no. Don't. I just wash my hair in the sink here at Beasley. Ooh. That's right. That's what I <laughs> or, do too. You or, nap in the corner yeah. there. Or don't people use that dry shampoo? I do. Yeah, for like yeah. two weeks. Uh -huh. The Ugh. shampoo, that stuff that you don't need any water, so you never, you don't wash your hair actually with water, right? I right. Don't get oh that. yeah. Yeah. It's now, a what thing. is it? Is it a comb through? Is it a powder? What What is that crap? It's a, it's a spray, and some of them are crazy because they'll actually like make your hair look gray. Like you spray it, and it'll look like it have like a white frosty tint to it. Yeah, that's what I do every oh, day. Oh, like, <laughs> like, so yeah. like it's a frosty tint. Like uh, if a uh, eighth grade class is doing. Like in Ebenezer Scrooge play. And yes. One of the kids got to play Ebenezer Scrooge and they use one of those little frosty little spray cans to make their hair look white. Exactly. Oh, exactly. Great. So some of them come out like that. So you have to pick a good one. But they tell you not to wash your hair, but once a week. What do they call it? Is healthy. it no rinse shampoo or dry, no, dry shampoo? Dry, dry shampoo. shampoo. Yeah. Usually have, they smell good. I've never used that stuff. Well, it's a girl thing or a woman thing. Why or, would you? Look at your hair. It's. No, but we, who, me? Yeah. yeah. I've got curly hair. What are you talking about? You should cut that my, thing. My wife loves my curly hair. All right. So, Roxanne, what is the current recommendation? Who said just a minute ago that women should only wash their hair once a week? She did. Oh, I did. did. Oh, you said that? All right. What is the real science on this? And it really, if it's women, it really should be... Men, too, I don't see what the delineation would be between men and women. What is the real science, real recommendation on how often we should wash our hair? Because I've heard it said that we should all, well, also, there are recommendations that you don't shower every day. Yeah. Okay. So I'll tell you my schedule. I'll tell you what I've been told. The re Your question, why aren't men and women the same? In this, in this instance, it's because our hair is longer. So this hair, look, look, MJ, this little piece of hair down here, this yeah. has been with me a long time, right? Right. Yeah. I've got to keep it healthy. So how long? We, so you're, you're, where's your hair? I don't even know where your hair goes. It's down. All oh, the you're, stories that piece of hair has. Your hair, <laughs> your hair would. This hair's been with this body for a long time. Your hair would be like just touching your like, uh, like, like the yeah, the yeah, nip, yeah. the nip area. Yeah, exactly. All right. I, I mean, you said it. Yes. All right. So your okay. the tip of your hair is like tip, set, tips, center center boob. All right, on right. you. Right. How long would you say? And that's when it's dry. When it's wet, it's longer. How long would you say that the very end, the tips of your hair have been in existence? <sighs> I, I Is don't, that ten years? Is I it, don't know. You know, as your hair grows and you get haircuts. Yeah. The tip last haircut you got, they cut the tips off. No, right? no, no. But yeah. but obviously it keeps pushing back. But 
Right, this particular tip. Right, How long that, has this been around? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> let's talk about <laughs> just these tips. Let's just, talk about Roxanne's <laughs> tips today. The tips touching the yes. tip. The, oh, sorry, <laughs> nips. Okay. Oh, and your husky <laughs> voice went away. If we, your husky voice with the tips talk, oh. this would be fantastic. <laughs> okay, so I, as, this is kind of a funny story. Yeah. I went on a girls' trip, and one of the girls was a stylist, a hairdresser, and so she was giving us all, all of us, like advice about our hair. And so she got to me and she's like, yeah, you've got so much hair. It's thin, but you've got a lot of it, but you, you need to keep it healthy. You really should only be washing your hair once a week. So once a week. She said once a week. Now, Festa, okay. do me a favor. Do some independent Googling over there. I want to see how, what you find on Google on how often should you wash your hair. I want to see how this. I could not adhere to that plan. I want to see how it jibes with uh, what. Roxanne's saying. I think I did it one time. And then she also had this oil that she suggested we all use. And I'm telling you guys, I don't know if you notice, you guys don't notice girl stuff like this, but I came to work one week. I tried her plan for one week. My hair has never looked so greasy because I had the oil she gave me and I didn't wash it for a week. And it was like, I just, it was so matted and oily. Mm. So I, can't, wow. I couldn't survive right. like that. Roxanne's getting more attractive by the second. <laughs> oh, oily yeah. hair. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Greasy Roxanne is really her best version. So uh, you could, I only so tried you, that. You could wring it out into like yes. a, into a fry daddy? Yes. And cook up some mozzarella sticks at home? Mm. <laughs> so I tried her protocol for a week and then I decided she hated me. Otherwise, why would she have suggested that? <laughs> And then I'm back to my regular regular schedule, which is twice a week. Oh, okay. Now, Festa, what are you finding online as far as the recommendation for how often we should wash our hair? According to a top dermatologist. Right. That's what I want to hear. I want to hear Dr. Top, Dr. Anthony who? Rossi. Dr. Anthony Rossi, top dermatologist. He tells his patients wash your hair once or twice a week. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Right, so, right oh, you can double it. You can have double the fun. If you do it twice a week versus yeah. once a week. Yeah, but washing your hair every single day, I would imagine also might lead to some hair loss. Well, I, yeah. What do they say? Is it true that you lose like 100 hairs a day? <laughs> I had always heard that. I, I, I lose more than that. I, Fester, type in how many hairs do you lose a day? <laughs> All hair? Yeah, yeah, well, listen, in your head, Froggy. Oh. Look, yeah. Uh, so it comes up. How many hairs do people lose a day? Fester just typed that into the Googles, and it says between 50 and 100 hairs. It's normal to shed that amount. When the body sheds significantly more hairs every day, a person has excessive hair shedding. So 50 to 100. I'd always heard 100. So right in that, that's the high end, apparently. I believe it. Now, who the hell did that science? You know who? Counting hairs yeah, like that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, the American Academy of Dermatology. Thank you very much. There you go. All right. It's like splitting hairs, you know. <laughs> hey, I saw Saturday Night Live. Not live, but I kind of zipped through it with Michelle. The highlights. Yeah. Travis Scott. Oh, he's the best. He, he did two songs that were full ass auto tune. It's like that, that doesn't. What is? Yeah. So. So what do you mean, so? I mean, he's not a singer, he's a rapper. He's so, an, why is he singing songs and it's 100%? He's very inspired by Cher. <laughs> hey, Andrew, do me a favor. See if Travis Scott, see if you can find it. Because Saturday Night Live, they put clips up. See if you can find Travis Scott from SNL. Saturday night would have been. April, I'm sorry, March, uh, March 30th. 30th, yeah. Wait, that guy's back? I thought that guy had a concert and like 50 people died. March, That's true. F- what was that? Uh, oh, that was a big thing in Houston, right? Like the Astro Fest? Ast- or- yeah. Astro yeah, Go- his concert. Astro World. Remember, people yeah. got crushed. Well, how long ago was that? Like a year, a year ago? ago? No, like, yeah, oh, hold on, 50 people didn't die oh. at his concert. Ooh, you know, it- you are such Come on. a non-believing fool. Okay, yeah. oh, uh, all right, Froggy, what, knows- are you just going to like disparage? Do you get pleasure at, at disparaging me? <laughs> like every- you, you get pleasure never believing my yeah. story? Just well, because you haven't heard of it, I'm just like, no. No, no you, you just true. It, it, down. it sounds a little familiar, but come on, 50 p- how uh, many it, people it died? Wasn't, it wasn't 50. It was 10. Okay, However, yeah, well, okay. All right. So a, a little difference between 10 people dying MJ, and 50 people dying. A life is a life. It, listen, I never said anything otherwise. 10 people dying is terrible. But it wasn't 50 people. Okay. Well, to well, their family, it was. I could say this is more Travis Scott content. 
Come on. I can't name one song he sings. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't know one thing he does. Why don't you listen? Andrew found some SNL from Saturday okay. night. Listen to this. Roll it, Andrew. And the whole damn thing is auto tune. Is it what kind of skill does it take when you go? What's this called? I don't know. Hold on, is this Saturday night? No. Yeah, that's our, that's his new song. Are you sure? Is he singing this? Maybe that's not him. Yes, it no, is. No, it is him. It's definitely him. Yeah. Right here. Okay, here it goes. No, no, hold on. There was more auto tune on my TV. This is awesome. I, you don't like this? Ugh, I hate it. I would. No, hold on. I don't think that's from Saturday Night. Let that keep going. That's a good song. There was a lot more auto tune on my TV. The whole thing, I was, I was like, what's going on here? Oh, so now you yes, like it. Yes, Andrew. This was posted in Saturday Night Live's own YouTube page okay, one yeah. day we, ago. We believe you. We believe you. Uh, but I don't know why it sounded like it was more auto tune on my damn TV. Did he write a song about my third favorite kind of burrito? I don't know. Fiend. Oh, I thought it was bean. <laughs> bean. Right. Bean. Bean. Because, you know, I'm normally a beef guy first and then chicken. And then back in, I get bean third. 6.32 at the MJ Morning Show. <laughs> Monday morning, April 1st again. Just a little programming note. There will absolutely be no April Fool's joke or prank pulled on you this morning here on the MJ Morning Show. Let me tell you what will happen. Morons in the news will happen. Next here on the MJ Morning Show on Q105. If your carpets need cleaning, I'm going to tell you right now, there's...
What are people going to realize that most hitmen are fake? <laughs> that if you're trying, <laughs> what are they going to realize this? All right, 641 at the MJ Morning Show. MJ and the crew, Monday morning, April 1st. When are people going to realize that if you try to hire a hitman, it's probably going to be an undercover cop, undercover FBI agent, whatever the story is. Here's another one. A guy that works as a produce wholesaler, so sells fruits and vegetables wholesale to, what, restaurants and stores, etc. Dude, I met a produce wholesaler this week. Did you Sweet. really? Yes. Oh. The school contracts. Oh, very Ooh. nice. Yes. Oh, very good. All right. A produce wholesaler right here in Florida. This is down in South Florida. I don't know if it's the one that you met. Oh, my God. Ma what's his name? Uh, Makram Kashman. Oh, no. My guy was Jerry. Oh, so it wasn't Makram <laughs> no, Kashman? Very different. Very different. Maybe Mak Makram tr uh, translates into Jerry. I Makram don't know. Kashman. Yeah. He's a produce wholesaler from South Florida, and he uh, tried to hire a hitman to take out his business rival. So he <laughs> he wanted to take out, I guess the wholesale produce business is very, very cutthroat. I bet. That's you what know, Jerry was saying. Undercutting on carrots and, and the kind of stuff, right? You know what? It's the leafy greens. Yeah. <laughs> so M Makram Kashman tried to hire a hitman to kill a rival, a competing produce wholesaler, and well, it turned out to be a federal agent. 
as it will most of the time. Then how do you find a real one? You don't <laughs> find a real one. Listen, uh, back in the day when the mob was a little more active and the five families were really cutting it up you know, <laughs> on the East Coast, you know. Yeah, the government's cutting into the, all the mob business. Yeah. Marijuana, but you can on gambling. the dark web. Yeah, yeah I'm thinking so too. Uh, listen, so did hey, what about the Hitman website? We've t- didn't we have the guy on the air? Did we ever have him? Because he followed me. The the fake hitman is it like rentahitman.com? Yeah, when you type in hire a hitman yeah, into yeah. Google, the first thing that comes up is his site. Yeah. The rent a hitman guy. And there are there are there are schmucks. There are absolute total idiots that will go on Google and search how to hire a hitman to take somebody out. And this dude started this rentahitman.com and there are people that really fill out the form trying to hire a hitman to have somebody killed. And this guy then turns it right over to either federal law enforcement or local law enforcement. And there have been arrests. We did a story last year about another arrest. Remember there was a guy, he was like an army veteran. He was like in his 20s. He did a couple of years in the army. He applied for employment. Oh, that yes, 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 that's right. He applied for employment to try to become a hitman, saying that his army training would make him a good hitman. I mean, you have idiots in both directions, people that are trying to hire a hitman or people that are trying to get a job as a hitman. Anyway, the Rent a Hitman website, rentahitman.com, is a phony, satirical parody site, and there are people that try to utilize the site. And the guy turns their information over to law enforcement. Anyway, the the guy, I noticed, this is sometime, I don't know, last six months or so, the guy that runs the site, he started following me on Instagram, and he's even commented on some of my posts. So um, yeah. after the story broke about the veteran who yeah. tried to apply for employment with mm-hmm. him, I contacted him and invited him to come onto the show. Right. He declined Citing uh, schedule conflicts. Oh, schedule conflicts. But I made him aware yes. and sent him all your information, yeah. so I'm glad he followed you Well, back. he started following me on Instagram. Anyway, uh, this is a Florida story. According to a criminal complaint, a, f- a confidential informant in February approached the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms to say that Makram Kashman asked if they could kill a business rival. The informant allegedly told Kashman they wouldn't, but knew someone who would. Instead, the informant went to the feds. So, uh, Mr. Kashman, most hitmen or anyone claiming to have a connection to a hitman, uh, it's not real, all right? Hey, speaking of law enforcement, I don't know. I think Lego is being a little moronic here. This kind of got me shrugging saying, really? Lego, the Lego company. Lego, yeah. the, the the beloved Legos. The stuff I step on in the middle of the night and hurt my feet. Oh, man. Ugh. Yeah, you step on like an eight blocker. Poof. Poof. Yep. So Lego told a police department in California to knock it off with using, you know, the little barrel shaped little Lego faces that go on the people. Yeah. The faces that go on Lego people. It's like that round. They look like mini propane tanks. That you, that you, you mean don't, the you head? Don't, yeah. 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 The head. Yeah. The head. They look like little barrels, like or little propane tanks, They're like little blue riders you get outside a Home Depot or something. So Lego told the California Police Department to stop using the Lego heads that they were superimposing. They were photoshopping on some people's uh, or suspects' heads. For whatever reason, they were releasing photos and they were showing suspects, but this police department in California would cover up their Faces? Oh my God, look at this picture of a guy on a bench with handcuffs. Exactly. Did they put that on his head or is that photoshopped? Uh, no, that's... That, no, dude, it's, it's not a life-size Lego head. <laughs> okay. It's a photoshop. But, but you know what, Fester, to your point, that's a good photoshop. Yeah, this, uh, this web person at this police agency is really talented. Lego has gone after a California police department. Why? They said, please stop putting our toy Lego heads... On suspects' faces, I guess they were, uh, this police department is is trying to comply with some California, like, uh, perp right, I mean, talk about woke. You've got someone that was arrested for a crime, 
and there are some laws in California that tell the police department you have to obscure the perp's face? Innocent until proven guilty. Well, still. It's got a public record when someone is arrested and there's probable cause for a crime. So the police department, in order to comply with, like, woke California laws protecting the rights of the crook, the accused offender, and yes, again, innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. So Lego asked the Murrieta California Police Department to stop sharing booking photos, mug shots, or other people suspected of nonviolent crimes. I guess that's the, is that the criteria in California? Nonviolent crimes? I guess so. Anyway, that's, is that ridiculous? Come on, Lego, really? Okay, okay. you know what, MJ? I kind, of, I kind of see Lego's point because they don't want that to be their brand. They're, yeah. They want to be, you know, catering to kids and families. So they don't want criminals representing those goofy-looking heads. Like, <laughs> and the Lego little plastic round heads yeah. or barrel-shaped heads that go on the little Lego people. Here's, here's a shot in the back of a police car, and two perps are cuffed and stuffed, seatbelts across them, and one guy has the Lego man with a little tear coming down his eye, or maybe that's a gang tear. Uh, maybe that Lego block. Maybe that Lego block killed somebody. All right, and then uh, the other one has like a oomph face, and then there's one. There's actually a Lego man head that has like a scruffy kind of like stubbly beard with little dots. Anyway, dude, with how many Lego sets they have out now, they probably have like a Lego Rikers Island or something. <laughs> yeah, like that, right? right, for sure. I mean, they must. I, I think I agree with Lego on this. I don't oh, want to be associated with you these know people. what Lego should have done? What? They should have done like a Dahmer set with the hit Netflix series. Yeah. Jeffrey Dahmer. Yes. Little drink with little white stuff floating on top just, and everything. Just and little, little plastic barrels with body parts. Oh, yeah. Little pieces yeah. of Lego. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. So early morons in the news on the MJ Morning Show. Uh, Roxanne just whipped something out a few minutes ago while you guys were out of the room. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, so it was just Roxanne and me and... Uh, I'm not supposed to be in a room with women alone. <laughs> I know. Uh, well, should... According to not... the lawsuits, <laughs> especially when <laughs> will you stop? There are no lawsuits. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, no! It's just—it's always been advice that you shouldn't be in a room uh, at work. It—it it just. And then you get mad at me for leaving the room. I never, get, to help I never you. get mad at you. With, with Where'd you me? go? Where do you guys disappear I to? I don't, I don't have any lawsuits against me, Froggy. What are you saying? Right. Don't disparage it's me. It's just an LMFAO. Jeez. Okay, all right. All right. JK, hey. bro. Anyway, so Roxanne whipped out this device, and it is uh, creepy looking. I don't know what that is, but Roxanne was touching herself with this device. I was. You don't know what that was, is? All right, hold on. Hey, hang on. We'll talk about it next. Don't move. How do you not know well, what that is? I've never seen it before. Hang on. It's next on the MJ Morning Show here on Q105. Find out exactly what it is.
MJ Morning Show on Q105, 702 on a Monday morning, one week away from the eclipse. Also, Fester brought us something. If I can't get to it here, we'll get to it in the long segment. Of course, we start an hour and 20 minutes of nonstop MJ coming up at about 725 this morning. Happens every single morning around 725. We launch an hour and 20 minutes plus of nonstop MJ. Also, folks... Coming up in that long chunk, we'll talk to the guy that took not only Fabio the duck, but saved another duck from slaughter. Folks, we are heroes. The MJ Morning Show, we are animal-saving heroes with our crazy reenactment of Fabio, which was Froggy's idea. Froggy brought it to the table. Oh, so I'm the hero. I'll take it. Well, listen, if you want to trace it all the way back, but I was the one on the air on Friday to see if somebody listening could take Fabio the Duck so Fabio the Duck didn't go back to Tampa Live Poultry where it was going to end up on some, end up on someone's dinner table. Mm. You know? I also have something to talk about as well. What's that? Well, Fester pitched me an idea, and I sort of want to pitch it to you on the air and all see right. what you think. Right, hold on. Let me deal with Roxanne's thing first. Yeah. Do you have samples? Yeah. Okay. Oh, Good. Jeez. <laughs> Trying to help God, you, it, pal. It smells very marijuana-y in the studio all of a sudden. I don't what know. the hell? Fester, what are you doing? Uh, I mean, it is just, Ish. whoa, man. It's like like we have a grow house next door, and they're blowing their fumes into our studio all of a sudden. What, <laughs> Probably where did do. That, where did that come from? I bet you we do have a grow house. <laughs> Froggy, where did this smell come from? Do you have any idea? I don't know. All right. It might be the show prep I did. <laughs> I'm sure it is. All right. Uh, here on April 1st, again, the no April Fool's Day prank guarantee here on the MJ Morning Show. We're not pulling anything. Did you hear what's happening? Oh, jeez. Today? Yeah. What's happening today what? on April 1st? What? So the mayor of Tampa, she said that if everybody doesn't flush their toilet at 8 a.m. on the dot, no. the electricity will shut down. <sighs> In Tampa Bay. Right. Froggy. So everybody at 8 a.m. <laughs> Froggy stop. Flush your toilet at stop. the same time. Stop. Is that real? Guys, no. we'll shut down the plumbing no, no, in Tampa. No, it's not. Froggy's. What? Froggy's. That's like, don't they do like stadium flush tests where they get all kinds of volunteers to yeah, flush? Yeah, I always do those. <laughs> he volunteers for them. In big buildings or stadiums? <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Yeah. When they built the new Tampa Stadium to replace the old... Uh, uh, old sombrero, the big, what they yeah. call it, the big sombrero? When they built the new Tampa Stadium, which, was that always Raymond James from the very beginning? Yeah, yeah. It's always right. Raymond James. Right. The old stadium was affectionately known as Houlihan Stadium at the end. Yes. What, was it? Yeah. Oh, oh that's right, because the Glazers owned the was- Houlihan's restaurant chain, which... It wasn't I don't even think, we, we didn't even have one in town, did we? I think they had to open one up and it closed <laughs> like a second later. It, they opened one and it closed like three weeks later. Anyway, so, no, seriously, they do those tests. And I, th- is this urban legend or they really do these? Where they get a whole bunch of volunteers, like at a stadium, to then flush every toilet at the same time to make sure the plumbing system can handle it. Yeah, that's what the mayor says. She wants to test oh, the plumbing in Tampa. Whole city. Whole city. So Frog. at 8 a.m., hey. she needs everybody to flush their toilet. Dude, it'll be awesome. <laughs> hey, doofus, yep. I just said we're not doing April Fur- uh, Fool's pranks. Uh, we don't do April Fool's pranks on this show. We never have. We never will. And uh, then you follow up immediately with some stupid uh, like April Fool's thing. Did you hear what else is going to happen? I, I, no, I don't want to hear anything it's else. everybody open I, your car door I, day when a bicyclist is coming uh, by. You, you just got, you <laughs> Dude, just, I just dumped that. You just got fired. <laughs> that's, what, that's what got Kramer fired, you idiot. Up you in got like, that? It's a joke. It's, well, guess what? That got Kramer fired. I dumped that. So what? Who cares about Kramer? That's why I did it. Because it's when, funny. One guy does one thing stupid and says, oh, Froggy on the radio. It's over for you. It's curtains. Dude, what are you saying, you you dummy? It's a joke. Yeah, we, Obviously, I don't want people to do that. Yeah, a guy named Kramer used to do nights. A good guy. Uh, and he is a nice guy. Really nice guy. So I, I always like Kramer. Yeah. A very talented guy. And Kramer... Did nights on our old radio station where we did the MJ Morning Show for years, and he made some kind of joke. After he left us, he went somewhere to the Pacific Northwest, Detroit. Right? No, he, 97 he, 1 FM talk. I think he went to like, no, oh, I think he went out west. Too. Yeah, I think it was Portland or Seattle or something like I that. I thought the door thing was in Detroit. Nah, I don't know. And he made some kind of comment about, yeah, when a bicyclist comes by, open your car door. And somebody did it. 
No. Uh, th- just the fact that he put it uh, into the universe. What? Some local or national cyclist organization, mm-hmm. they they can be very militant and very influential, and they threw a fit, and they had him fired. He got fired. He got canned over that, if I'm not mistaken. And we can't do any kind of jokes around here? So. Or, or, or he, got in, he got in big trouble, whatever the or, story was. Or, or we stick to funny jokes. Uh, hey, Froggy, what's the matter with you? All right. Anyway. When you said when you said Kramer, I thought you were talking about Kramer, the TV show, Kelsey Grammer. And I was like, well, it's just TV. Probably, you know, it's just part of the no. script. That's what you think about on TV <laughs> when you hear whoa, 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 Kramer. Hang on. Kramer on what? <laughs> right? Kelsey Grammer? Is, no, or not no, Kramer. No, oh, that's, what am I conflating? Kramer's on Seinfeld. <laughs> I'm just sorry. the biggest show Do me. ever. What, what, dump me. Just dump me. No, <laughs> it's worse it, than what it, Froggy it, just said. It's too late. Lost my mind. Kramer's not Frasier. Don't you like Kelsey Kramer? Frasier. Frasier. Yes. Frasier's not Kramer. Kramer. Frazier popped into my head. Kelsey okay. Grammer popped into my head. And I was like, oh. Two different right. shows. I know. I just met both on NBC. Uh, okay. B- both on NBC. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> With a must-see TV. I don't know. Anyway. All right. All right. So, <laughs> moving on to, maybe you need this device to scratch <laughs> your brain or something. <laughs> maybe that was her April Fool's joke. <laughs> right. Blood flow. All right. Roxanne, during the last break, Roxanne was in the studio. You guys were gone. And you whipped out this. Is that thing purple? Yeah, and it has a name, so refer to it. What is it? The first person. I don't know what the name is. Third person. What's the name? Hook. It's the purple hook? hook? It's hook. That's the dumbest name ever. Oh, I saw that on Shark Tank this weekend. Hold on, wait a minute. That was on Shark Tank? Yeah. Oh, it wait. was on this weekend. A little no, no. kid invented no, no, that. No, no, Are you no. serious? H- hang on, it must have been on one of the no, CNBC a, reruns. Yeah, yeah, a little kid invented that. Yeah, but, I've had this forever. Yeah, well, yeah, because it wasn't a fresh episode. No, it was old. On the yeah, on the weekends, like CNBC, they run old Shark Tank episodes, or don't they stream them on one of the streaming platforms? MSNBC, it's on. All day long, basically. Uh, CNBC or MSNBC? Uh, I don't know one of them. Yeah, one of those. I don't yeah, watch either a, of them. MSNBC, NMS, I believe. <laughs> but a little kid literally invented that thing. And Roxanne holds this thing up, and I'm like, my God, that looks like a something like a, a modern day Freddy Krueger would use. So this thing is called what? Hook. This thing's just called the hook. No, I just named it that. I have I've had it for so long. I don't know What's, what it's called. What, dude, it's got a name. It's it looks a, like a, it's, it's a it looks like a question, question mark. mark. It looks it's like, like a, a circle mark. hook. Hold yeah. on. You name things that. Oh yeah. After exactly what it looks like. Oh, <laughs> you. Hey, can you hand me this thing? It, okay, and you have to use Let it me. too because it's hey, just gonna yeah. right. change your life. I'm gonna hold. It looks this. like a should be. Never mind. I'm holding this thing up. Already, yeah. <laughs> I'm holding this thing up on MJ TV right now. Right. And it is it looks blue on MJ TV, but it's actually it's purple. It's very purple to my eye, but I'm looking at it on the MJ TV screen. It looks at least on the camera screen facing me, it looks kind of blue. So it is it looks like a giant question mark. Hang on, let me let me stand back. It looks like a giant question mark here. And it's got like this round nub. With like a little nipple. It's got a nipple. Yeah, it does. And then, it, and then a rubber handle, and you're supposed to take it. Uh, uh, explain what you do okay. with this thing. You just grab it. You've got the right grip. It's got a nice place for you to grip your hands. No, MJ, you're not doing it right what? because you're not getting the right angle. What 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 angle does it you, need? You have to dig. You have to get the angle and to almost like you're pulling yourself forward, like mm. really dig it into between your muscles. There you go. Now dig pull it. forward and down. So the one that Roxanne has. And down? Yeah, Dig doesn't it. that feel great? This, like you have these tiny little muscles back here, I, this, and they get all knotted up. It feels gets them out. It feels annoying. It's called no. the it's called the Q flex. Yeah, is that this it? is the exact is item that Roxanne right. purchased Roxanne. and was on Shark Tank. It's called the Q flex. Well, it's named it's not hook. called the hook. It's no, it's not the hook. It's hook. Where's why, hook? Why, why, you just call, the... why, why you just call it Captain Hook? <laughs> why doesn't she? Oh, it was <laughs> invented Ca- Captain Hook. It was invented by a mother and daughter duo. You know what? It's an interesting thing that you bring that up because the reason I love Hook is... I, <laughs> it's called the Q-Flex. The movie? She's, She's a great movie. movie. She's personifying it's, it. It's acupressure made easy as seen uh-huh. on Shark Tank. Because yeah. that, like, see the end, you called it a nipple, okay, the, the end point of Hook, yeah. that is small. So that gets into, like, your your places where your muscles are really tight. And it's, I don't. I, I, this does. This. Uh, it does everything. This feels for like, me. like I'm being poked in the head with a with a claw hammer or something. I, you know. How's it do? Can you get a butt itch with that I, thing? I, I mean, yeah. If you turn it upside down, you can. I. This does nothing for me. It, maybe it works for you. It but does everything it? for me. It does everything. Need it. 
Yeah, here you go. I'm don't handing, break hook. I'm handing, How can I break this? I do, Ble- do not break it, Frog. You don't bend it. How much was See? that? Okay. Oh, wow. I don't know. I don't right? know that it's... it gets your pressure pulled. Yeah. How yes. long have you had this thing? Uh, I, I mean, I've had it for five years at least, I think. So, oh, MG, it's oh. not so much a massage thing as much no. as it is acupuncture. Point oh, pressure. Release. You put it like in the oh. middle of the- <laughs> I just have never had a need for this thing. Ooh. Why do I need to go. poke Pressure's myself nice. with a hard nipple in my back? Yeah, look, you can do it on your foot too if you want to. <laughs> see, how can that be invented in tube socks on a roll can't? <laughs> I-, I just don't see what the deal is here. I don't need this. Oh, it, so it, Froggy, it, you're singing its praises, Roxanne. You you can't go a day without it's this. It's the only thing that that helps me. Like we have every My single, God. you know, the vibrating what, 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 those what? jackhammer like massage things that yeah. have the four four like balls at the end. We've got mm. that. We've got all kinds of massage stuff. We've got chairs. We've got hang upside down things. Wow. This is the thing that Jeez. that does it for me. This Fester? is the thing that does it for Roxanne. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Looks like Andre the Giant's sex toy. Yeah, right. <laughs> you need my back. The, it's Give not me the, the hook. It's not the hook. It's called the the Q flex. Q flex. Yes. Q flex. Yes. So, and you've never talked about this in the past. What what no. made you bring it in today? Uh, because what are you, are you having spasms? No, my kids were fighting with it last night. They were look. Oh, do you this, beat your this. kids with this thing? No, you could watch. choke someone they, with that. They were night. like this with it. Look. Oh, like, oh like, the like, gravity to my yes, neck. Yes. You, should, you should use that when Fester tells a bad joke. <laughs> or <laughs> you. Hook him off the stage. Or, or when, when Fester starts <laughs> yawning, just grab him by the look, neck. Actually, look. I'll, he'll look. Uh, MJ, watch. He can open his mouth real uh, big. Uh, hey, uh, hey, hey. It's like uh, a fish. Ew. I'll catch him like a ew. fish. Ew. You're Wait, missing this. Where was what? that? Oh, oh, don't stick in his mouth. That's no, disgusting. No, but, but I mean, like, you know, that's that's oh. the idea. Did you just get that on video with the hook in Fester's mouth almost? All right, so oh my uh, God. according to the Google, they cost 50, 56 bucks. What? For a little, what? Are you kidding me? For a little twisted uh, metal pipe? I had no 50 idea. 50-something bucks? 58 43 this thing, this thing costs like $4 to make. Yeah. That's the point. That's uh, why the sharks bought it. Which was the shark that backed this thing? I don't know. All right, 714 at the MJ Morning Show. When we get back, we start an hour and 20 minutes of nonstop MJ. Oh, man, the Diddy pile. The Sean Diddy Combs pile has grown, and you got to hear some of the stuff. He wanted to eat someone's face off. Wait, what? (laughs) That's just scratching the surface. We are loaded next. Oh, I've got some uh, little tips for the office. Yeah, uh, office romance, love in the office, uh, any uh, office uh, boom chicka wow wow shenanigans, you got to hear it. Hang on. Uh, We're loaded next. I I haven't even scratched the surface on what's coming up in minutes here on the MJ Morning Show on Q105.
MJ and the crew, 727, launching an hour and 20 minutes of nonstop MJ right now. All right, I'm, I'm two minutes later than I like to be. But anyway, you still get an hour and 20 minutes plus. We just give you more on the backside. All right, welcome, folks, to a brand new week of MJ Morning Show crap casting. If you did not see or hear the show on Friday, and I say see because... We're on MJ TV every single morning. You get to watch the show. Not only listen, you can watch us on uh, YouTube. We stream the entire show, 6 until close to 10 a.m. every morning. MJ TV, you go to mjmorningshow.com. You click on MJ TV at the very top. And you can watch the live broadcast when we're on from 6 to 10. Or you can go back and watch any show you want in the archives or you know, get to it later on in the day and watch today's show. Friday, we had the duck event. Friday was just, it was a weird day. It was Good Friday. It was a weird day. I think listenership was probably a little uh, lower because schools were out on Good Friday. If you missed the Fabio duck reenactment, I went back and I watched the whole thing. I'm like, oh, my God, this is fabulous. See, and, and you naysayed it the whole time. Well, because it just felt odd. I'm like, what are we doing? <laughs> it, it was a ridiculous bit. But you know what? When I went back and I watched over the weekend, I'm like, whoa, this is pretty good. Folks, when you get time, go to MJTV and watch the replay. Go to MJMorningShow.com and MJTV. You can watch the replay. Or uh, we've really simplified it for you. Uh, we put the actual excerpt up on Instagram. So if you're on Instagram, we turned it into a reel. It's a 19-minute long segment. 19 minutes long. Yes, Rox, we've been back on the air for uh, five minutes. I'm glad you could join us this I morning. I got locked out. You, it's, it happens. It happens. It does happen. Locked out how? Locked out. How do you? Locked out. Were you in the bathroom or yes. outside in the parking lot? I was in the bathroom. and Well, I, don't you know that? You leave and you got to have a yes, card to get back in. I yeah. do. It's not but your first day at work here. I had to go so bad that oh. I ran. I was like, oh my gosh, I got to go. Tell me more I about ran, this. Yeah, I ran in there and then, you know, use the restroom. Can I you point something all the details. out? That the having to go really, really bad, that seemed to be a thing like when you were like <laughs> seven, eight, Second ten, day. maybe maybe up to 12 years old. And that, that went away. And as you get to be an adult... You can hold it for a very long time. Not when you're doing the big chunk of MJ, yeah, an yeah. hour and a half. MJ, gotta I gotta go ready. TT. I gotta go TT bag. Can uh, I go? Anyway, can, where, can where, where, where was I? Is, where was I before? Uh, something about a duck. Something oh, oh about... so uh, <laughs> we we excerpted the whole segment, and it's 19 minutes long. But man, it is. You can watch what you want, and you can skip around. Oh, it but flies by like it's two minutes. The whole duck segment of the reenactment of Fabio getting smashed in the face. And Froggy somehow was alerted to this. Somehow Froggy said, hey, guys, guess what? This Friday, meaning last Friday, the 25th anniversary of Fabio, the romance novel model, and I can't believe it's not butter. Yeah. You know, Fabio, 25th anniversary of him being invited to be like the celebrity of the grand opening of a roller coaster in Williamsburg, Virginia, at Bush Gardens, Williamsburg. Not Bush Gardens, Tampa Bay, but Bush Gardens, Williamsburg, uh, Sister Park. And then while Fabio was on the ride back in 1999, uh, what was it, the 20, was it 29th? 29th, yeah. 29th of March, 1999, they're on the roller coaster. And Fabio gets smashed in the face with a goose. Oh, yeah. And he comes back into the station. His face is all bloodied. His nose was broken. And then we recreated it with a duck, a live duck in the studio. And let me tell you right now, there is a phenomenal story. We're going to talk to Randy in about 15 or 20 minutes here on the MJ Morning Show. For anyone that might be upset that Fester tossed the duck into Froggy's face, let me tell you right now. That that little duck toss, and the duck was not even remotely hurt. The duck is fine. That saved the duck's life. Because afterward, after the bid on Friday, I said, I need a listener right now to adopt this duck so it doesn't get taken back to Tampa Live Poultry and slaughtered for someone's dinner. That's right. And guess what? Randy, the listener, stepped up, went and picked up the duck. Uh, we have a picture of the duck in the backyard. I got to post that, by the way, because it is in the slideshow. 
If you go to my Instagram, Certified MJ Radio, you got to see the freeze frame of Froggy's bloodied face as Fabio. We got to do two things. Um, What's that? We got to put do a split screen on Froggy's face because you have to click through the images. I want to see side by side. Oh, I can do that. Yeah. You know, like MJ you posts. Just, dude, just go just, left and right, you dude. Just go left and right. Listen, just, if I'm looking at your tiles on your Instagram, I'm I go just to my right Instagram. Listen, it. it's easy. Go to my Instagram. Go to Certified <laughs> MJ Radio and just look at Froggy's bloody face with Froggy with the Fabio wig on, all the fake blood running down his face, and then you just click over to the next picture and it's Fabio. Was real- that good blood? Oh the, no! The blood was great. That was so good. I'm so yeah. happy. Yeah, really Party was. City. That was, was really good. Fake blood from I Party City. I wish I went. Oh, I wish I went heavier on it at first, though. I sort of blew it in the beginning. You did. I told you. That's why I she handed says, it I'm to sorry. you. Sorry. You can little... see me in the video. I'm trying to hand you the the pint of blood. Know, it's like yeah, more yeah. blood, more blood, more blood. I needed more. The more, video more. is is tremendous. It's phenomenal. And not only did we save Fabio the Duck's life, and it's now living in Randy's backyard in St. Petersburg. Uh, he also grabbed the second duck. So Taha, the uh, guy from Tampa Live Poultry, yep. gave Randy a second duck. So that's a, now two ducks that won't be dinner that we saved the lives. So put that in your cap, Peter, if you plan to complain about us uh, tossing a duck into Froggy's face. Now, ducks oh, this is live on the show. All right, now, stupid. Fester, uh, 733 at the MJ Morning Show, rolling up on 734. Fester, you said something to me. During the last break that we had, yes. and you know, I even said it's kind of a little morbid to think about this because you know when you are in your and this is kind of the way you perceive time. It's kind of like the same notion when you're in third grade, fourth grade. I mean, even you know in high school or you know tenth grade, whatever. It just seemed that the days went so slow, especially yeah. in school mm-hmm. and. And those clocks on the wall just, oh. they seem to be glued in position. Just when you're younger, just time is just standing still many times during the day. It just doesn't feel like the clock is moving. But then as you get older, the days are just flying by. The weeks fly by, the months fly by, the years fly by. And I just had this kind of uh, existential conversation with Fester because Fester posed a question to me just a few minutes ago. This is off the air during a break. Yeah. And Fester said to me. I asked, um, do you think you have 21 years left? Frog, or, uh, Fester says to me, hey, MJ, do, do you think, this is off the air. Yeah. I'm I talking brought about, this up to him right. last week. How long do you think he'll live? Yeah. Fester says, hey, do you think you have 21 years left in you? Yeah, what is this with this question all of a sudden lately? Yeah, I don't know, but th- mine is like foreshadowing something about me. Mine has a direct. Well, Froggy was trying to say that you off yourself doing these dumb Instagram videos. Yes, <laughs> yes, last week. I'm coming up with a actual reason for that specific amount of time. So, twenty one years. Fester asks me, "Hey, MJ, you think you've got twenty one years left in you?" I'm like, "Why?" And then he brings up this map because in twenty forty five, April. 12th of 2045. April 12th. Folks, mark this down on your calendar now. Put a reminder. Yeah. You know, with one hour uh, alarm going off. All right? One hour alarm going off. Uh, or, or, or a day, day before. 24 hour alarm. On April 12th, 2045, Fester? A, so, a total solar eclipse rolls over Tampa Bay. Of your heart? Uh-huh. Yeah. A total Eclipse of your heart. <laughs> that joke, that joke's not funny. Turn around. Turn around. And I get a little bit horny when I see you coming down. There's no, there's no horny in that song. Yeah. Oh, I, that's what I, that's, that's why no. she turns around. There's no horny. <laughs> when you turn around. Right. 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 So, and I want to go You didn't know that song's about sex? Come on, dude. No, Turn it's not. Around, Did you say goat? For me. No. I said I said go I said go downtown. Oh, what? <laughs> All right. Anyway, there's a, obviously everyone's talking about the solar eclipse, the total eclipse which happens a week from today. It's next Monday, it's April 8th. And here in the Tampa Bay area, I put my zip code into one of the calculators. 
It, listen, it doesn't matter whether you're three three six one one, whether you're three three five one one, whether you're three three six two nine, or whatever. It doesn't matter whether you're Pinellas, Hillsborough, Pasco, Polk. We're all going to get about the same eclipse. So we're only getting about fifty eight percent of the eclipse. So it's kind of a yawner here. Is it going to dim anything? Is it going to be like uh, darker? You know, I, I don't think that's enough to really make a noticeable dim. And. I, I do have the glasses, and oh, I got to bring them in. My glasses are from 2017, and they try to tell you, oh, if your glasses are older than a year, you need to get new glasses. Sure. B.S. I found something. I went to the NASA website, and the gla- if you have glasses, if you have eclipse glasses left over from the 2017 eclipse, you can use those eclipse glasses as long as they're. I love this. As long as there are not holes in them. Okay. <laughs> as long as they're not <laughs> damaged or cracked. Yes. So. So at one point these glasses did expire. At one point in. No, court- no, they. It was kind of like from a legal standpoint, from a cover your butt standpoint, the glasses manufacturers for these little flimsy cardboard glasses. With the very opaque plastic lenses, you know, they tried to say, you know, expiration date. Yeah, it's listen. We've got milk in our fridge from last October. It's you know, it's got a little bite Ew. to it, but you know, it's you know, no, I'm kidding. Literally, we, you have to bite it. We, hey, but Michelle made buttermilk biscuits yesterday. Yum. And they were. Oh, some people didn't like my little. Uh, yeah, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't say it. Uh, so, like, dude, you know what? I was an ultra boy for years, and personally, I, I was offended. Some people, but most people thought it was funny. No, nope. very edgy. You're I, very edgy. So, so what? What biscuit joke? I mean, folks, lighten up, please. What biscuit joke? This is going to be an MJ Instagram exclusive. It's not funny. What? Though. What to you? What, it's not a joke. Joke. It's what? A, what? A little irreverent. It's a pun? Is it a pun? It's, no, it's not a pun. Is it? All right. This is an MJ Instagram exclusive. You have to go to my Instagram, certified MJ radio, and look for the biscuits. It's very easy. It's a quick little 10-second video. And most people, I think, thought it was funny. I had some people say, you got to take that down immediately. All right. What is it? All right. Go to my Instagram. If you care about it. Go to my Instagram, Certified MJ Radio, and if you like what you see and you don't follow me, give me a follow while you're there. But send me a message. Add a comment. Is it that bad what I did? Come on, everyone. Lighten up. It's not, Look for the quick little biscuit video on my Instagram, Certified MJ Radio. Anyway. With such ear bait. All right. Back to, <laughs> back to the eclipse. Yes, the, the eclipse. Next week or the eclipse coming to Tampa well, well, in 21 years? Both. All right. So we only get 58% of the eclipse here, but we're going to have a total eclipse. And this is where Fester introduced a little bit of uh, uh, like uh, morbidity. and. Uh, I'm sure we have a large segment of listeners who understand that they don't have 21 years left. Oh, Fester, what are you doing? So you think fe- people <laughs> want to think about if, this, if you ghoul? If you're 65 years old, are you thinking, I'm going to make it to... 80, 86. Well, you don't think about it, dummy. You Festa don't? says to me, hey, MJ, you got 21 years left in you. And listen, I'm 58. Right. I feel like I'm 28. I act like I'm 18. We'll be able to steal his my, money when he's 78. My, my wife calls me a little kid all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, she's like, you're a child. You are. You got I, something wrong. <laughs> so if you do the math, 21 years from now, I'll be 79. Man, that's whacked, man. You'll be doing that your is, little IG videos That is still. crazy. So if you go by the family and just like health history, I should, my dad is 81. My, most of my grandparents lived to the mid 80s. I had one grandfather. My mom's dad died at 69. Yeah, but they didn't dive as much as you. Well, that uh, dude. A shark could get you anytime. I'm staying active, and the the physical activity that I do should technically keep me younger. But Fester, if you go by the uh, actuarial numbers, uh, I should be here in 21 years. But I, I don't want to jinx anything. So what I'm saying I is, get don't, hit by a bus crossing the street later today. That could happen to any of us. Yeah, but don't get too hung up over missing this eclipse rolling through Dallas and then kind of up past Detroit, out Illinois, Maine. Indiana, yeah. Ohio, up to like. Buffalo, Niagara Falls. Yeah, so that's going to be the total eclipse path. But there's also a big question, is cloud cover 
going to affect any of these areas. That's going to suck. Can you imagine? People are going to the eclipse zone, and they're paying like eight, nine hundred, a thousand dollars for motel rooms at like cheap ass places like La Quinta, where it's typically one hundred nine a night, and they're charging like eight, nine hundred dollars a night for. Uh, eclipse hotel rooms. Can you imagine you go to a place, you fly in, you drive in, you spend a fortune on the hotel room, and then it's cloudy and you don't get the eclipse? <laughs> Hopefully that's not the case. But the point is, you got the eclipse that happens a week from today, and we're only going to get 58% here. And I, I listen, if you put the glasses on, you'll probably be able to see uh, the cover. You'll be able to see 58% uh, covered. But still, it's going to be very bright out. It's not going to be like we're going dark and the birds are going to freak out and your dog's going to, you know, climb under the couch. That's going to be April 12th of 2045 <laughs> in, the, in the Tampa Bay area. We will have a total eclipse 21 years from now. Crazy. Yep. There's going to be a party at Pier 60 Sugar Sand Festival. And in 21 years? No, no, no. On oh. Monday oh. at yeah. Clearwater Beach yep. and the first 2,500 visitors and attendants get the specialty glasses. Yep. That's a fun festival. Mm-hmm. That'll be fantastic. All right, now who's got a pitch for me? Oh, well, Fester pitched me something. Dude, I don't, if you're going to make a mockery of my idea. There's no mockery. I mean, Why do we have to pitch MJ? It kind of sounds a little mockery. Generally, we don't pitch live. We talk about it off air. Hey, right, what do you hold think of this? Quick, you guys, I have a lot of stuff. We have a lot of news we got to do. There's a lot of interesting things. What is the pitch? All because right. Fro- Froggy said to me, you got to hear Fester's pitch. I don't know if you're going to agree with what I think about it, but... Fester called me on Friday, and uh, and he told me about this new bit idea he has. And it's sort of like a 8-bit hit. Remember that one we used to do? Oh, yeah. How could we forget? Yes. When we played music, but it was in the style of 8-bit. Yes. Mm-hmm, like a video game sounding thing. Yes. Uh, it's sort of like that, but it's different. It's a little bit different. It's sort of like a name the song type thing. Fester, do you want to take it from here? Because I know you're very <laughs> enthusiastic. Give me the pitch in 30 mm. seconds. Go. Go. Elevator pitch. All right. First of all, I don't appreciate being thrown into the bus. Just like give me the really MJ, we got it. an hour. What's your deal? Yeah. Listen, What's the pitch? Rand- Randy's I- fine with the ducks. No, I have a, a little- lot of other things I got to get to. If you're going to jam this into a shoehorn segment, I'm then not jamming it in. What, okay. What's Ew. your pitch? All right. So, Froggy has New this. New bit pitch. Go. Yes. Froggy has this Hal Herman caricature character yes. that yes. he does. And I got to admit, Hal Herman's been. Not coming around too much lately, especially with the game show ideas, right? Yeah, we, we had the eight yeah, bit hit. Because well, he's on? a news reporter. Wait, 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 wait. What is this? What's happening? What's you, going on with your game oh, show? I see what you're I, doing. I'm pointing out that I'm solely looking out for you and the creativity. First of, of the all, show. the guy who used to make the eight bit hit songs ended his YouTube channel, well, so well, I don't guys, know what to tell you about yeah, that. Yeah, and, and okay. I have to tell you, uh, Hal is a serious news reporter okay. now. He doesn't have time for silly game oh, shows. He's bringing very factual news. Thank you, Roxy. That's why he's on the midday show. Yeah, Hal Herman headlines where every single story is ridiculous. And completely false. So last week yes. we make a relationship with Taha. Uh, he gives us the the duck to throw at uh, Fabio over here. It was yes. great. Anyway, Taha gave me a chicken. Right, he gave me right. two chickens. One chicken. One chicken already died. But Jesus. yeah, rooster Fester. died in the back. I got into a fight with a with a with a raccoon. Anyway, but, <laughs> what? Yeah. Anyway, I have. What a chicken. is your bid pitch? I, I'm. I can't do an elevator pitch. I got to give. I got to give a long. What is your but, problem? But, but, you give talk a long about form. your IG so, for ten minutes. Yeah. So, so anyway, I get I a chicken. Know. I have a chicken in the backyard right now. It has lived through the weekend. I saw Sally the chicken yesterday. Okay. But anyway, so I go online. You Friday. had a chicken that got taken up by a raccoon in your backyard. I had two chickens. I had a rooster and a chicken that Taha gave me. And then you like, didn't tell me this. I think I did on the air, but we, yeah, everything was so hectic. Did. Everything was so hectic, we didn't pick up on it. A and raccoon killed one of the chickens. You see what would have happened to Fabio if you kept it? The rooster, the rooster, well, I found dead Friday after the show. So oh I did, I did, my! You know. God. How do you know it was a raccoon that took it out? Well, I have coon, raccoons in the backyard, right? You choked your chicken in the backyard? No, I just picked them up and threw them away. Oh, anyway, that's not here nor there. So it's terrible. I have this chicken. This isn't a good pitch. And I'm kind of digging no, it. This is ruined. Well, listen, this, is, this is a <laughs> now, long. Now I'm really listen, depressed. I'm a long form guy. Anyway, I go to YouTube and I start looking up chicken coops. Yep. Right? Chicken coops, chicken coop design, the size of the run, the laying boxes. So I'm getting into this. And then YouTube knows I'm looking for chickens. It says Mr. Chicken, and it's a bunch of rubber chickens. And they play songs. Rubber chickens that play songs on YouTube. Yes. And I'm like, this is a Hal Herman segment. Oh, so it's a new, like, 
guess the song that a chicken does? I mean, it's like it's like the what, eight bit hit, but with uh, a chicken. Are they clucking? We could. Cl- well, it's not like a clucking, clucking songs. No, let him play. It. Play him a version. It's not see like if you a can guess it. Chicken. It's like the toy chicken that you squeeze and goes ah, like that. Don't tell him anymore. See if you can guess the first one. All right. So this is a test. All right. How many do you have? These are up? chickens that do songs and. <laughs> you want Hal Herman to do this as a new bit? I mean, it guess, doesn't guess suck. the clucking song. All right, let's practice. Oh, okay. oh that's guess a great title. Herman. Guess the clucking song. Here's Hal what Herman. clucking song is this? Okay, now we got a working title. Right. We got and the then, new now, game show. Guess the clucking song. Hey, hey, Hal hey, Herman, hey cluck you. And cluck you and cluck this. If it's the mama duck that's singing, it's guess the mother clucking song. Yeah, yeah. Wait. The mother yes, cluck. It's a mother chicken, but yes. Uh, All right. Yes. Here's our first. Right. First contestant, MJ. You mother cluckers. This, Here we go. This is our first one. Yeah, right. Let's see if MJ can guess. All right. Oh, wait. There's music. Listen. Listen. Wait. Dude, this wait. doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't work. Dude. <laughs> see? This- wait a minute. This, 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 okay, MJ, what song is this? It's Bohemian and Rhapsody <laughs> by Queen. How much you tell? It's playing the piano behind. This doesn't work. All right, go to another one. Go to another one. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing. This is terrible. <laughs> this, <laughs> this doesn't we work. We can't the piano. You okay. can't. So if you, you, it was you, just you, an idea. You would need the chicken just making the noise, not having the Bohemian and Rhapsody <laughs> piano behind. I'm not going with the whole idea. The bit doesn't work. If the song is being played behind, it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, let me find another one. Let me find my, another one. No, the, the, whatever you find. I guess this one. Oh, my God. All right. Again. Like, like, Dude, again. the music's the playing. Music. <laughs> I know what this what is. What is this? This is Tina Turner, Simply the Best. You should take listener calls. <laughs> this, actually, it's pretty funny. This, this, I mean, you would never guess it otherwise. Yes, I yes, would. I, I, I knew what it was in the first two seconds of the music. Without the music. If it was just the chicken. Uh, go to another one. Maybe it's better. No, hang on. Let the hook play. It's building up to the hook. This is you're simply the best. Come on, here, here it comes. It's coming in a minute. Oh. <laughs> Fess, this, this doesn't it's, work. Okay. No, I like it. It's fine. I don't care. I'm not married to it. Come on, we should do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see? Hang, hang on, here, here, here comes the hook. <laughs> The red. I check. Oh, come be on, like one this. more, one more. Yeah. Be you like can... this. It doesn't work if the actual song is playing behind the chicken. Aww. Then you know what the I... song is. I mean, conceptually, it's a great clucking idea, but with the music in the background, it just it gives it away. Okay, fine. that is You're correct. The worst searcher. Is, I've is there ever another seen. another example? There's a hundred of them. <laughs> Oh yeah, get, get, do the do the do the one on top right there. This one? Yeah, do that one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, Johnny. Ooh, okay. <laughs> right. I think I know it. This should be like this. <laughs> Wait, what is this? I think it's Take chance a on chance me. on me. It's Abba. How do you know? <laughs> How do you not know what this is? <laughs> this is what we need. Yeah, that, that that pitch is not gonna fly. Well, you're crazy. Oh, what, do you mean, okay. what do you mean I'm crazy? I'm not you crazy. You won't get this. You won't get this. One more. One more. You won't get it. Close your eyes. Oh my god. All right. Oh come on. It's no doubt. It's Gwen Stefani. It's it's. Uh, I bet you don't, listeners it, don't speak. I bet you listeners will like it. I mean, da, da, da. come so, on. All I'm going to hear is the first note. The bit doesn't work if the song's playing in the background. If you just had the chicken clucking with no music, then then name that clucking song might work. You you sound like, you act like we have serious contests here. How about what the cluck? Call that. How about go cluck yourselves? <laughs> 
Oh, Fine. He ixnated. Sorry, bro. Yeah, that doesn't work. All right. <laughs> so I'm rejecting the pitch. Boom. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to call this guy, see if he can send us some of his tracks without the music behind That would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll make if friends he, with him. But I, I still think it's uh, gives it away too much. But also, I think you might need the music for the quacking or the Hence cluck clucking. The predicament. That, well, it is a predicament. All right, moving along. It's a Se- clucking conundrum. <sighs> 7.52 at the MJ Morning Show here on Q105. All right, uh, Randy's available. Take a call in a few minutes. Yeah, I, you have his number? <laughs> I don't Why would I have Randy's number? I don't know. You, I think it's in our text chain. All right. He, he, just call him hot. couple of things that I want to discuss. A couple of local items here. Uh Starting very short. Oh, starting today. I was going to say starting very shortly. Yeah, very shortly, <laughs> as in today. I agree now. Yeah. Uh, the city of Tampa will enforce electric scooter rules. You know how I've complained about scooters being littered all over the streets of Tampa? They leave them in my neighborhood. They're littered on the side of the road. It's an eyesore. The scooters, the bikes, they're a menace. You know, the Lime bikes or whatever the hell they are, and the, and the electric scooters that people just, they just, they're strewn all over the sidewalks. Who thinks this is a good idea? Well, uh, I've been complaining rightfully because it deserves a complaint that these devices are just left haphazardly all over the place, blocking sidewalks and they're pedestrian hazards. Well, guess what? Electric scooter and electric bike riders, they have to put their devices back in docking stations or face a fee. Yep. From who? You're not going to be starting today. No, but who's going to issue the fee? Like the company? Uh, This is according to the city of Tampa. You're not going to be able to park your scooter or electric bike anywhere you want starting today. I'll park my scooter in the middle of the Hillsborough River. You've got three different companies which offer the scooters and bikes across the Tampa Bay area. You've got Spin. You've got Lime. you got Hellbiz. Bird. Is that Hellbiz? Like, this business is hell? Uh, anyway, it, it's the city of Tampa's, what do they call it, the micro-mobility sharing program or whatever it is. So now, starting today, th- this is the actual tweet, or what do, you, what do you call it now that it's not Twitter, it's X? Here's the latest X. All right, here's the latest tweet. City of Tampa, this was uh, from uh, Saturday. Starting April 1st, riders must park their shared e-vehicles in docking stations or face fees. You can't leave them anywhere anymore. These charges will ensure sidewalks remain open and improve safety. I've been complaining about this for years. It's like, what is going on? What, they finally figured it out here in the city of Tampa that these bikes and, and scooters littering the roads are a menace? So you got, you got to put the bike or the scooter back in like a specific docking area, or the other option is throw it into the Hillsborough yeah, River. Mean, seriously, <laughs> drop it in the middle of the bay. Yeah, I just, mean, MJ, who's going to enforce this? I mean, they're going to have cops ish standing by the Chargers. You over there? Here's the citation. I don't know if like they know if you don't dock the unit. Maybe there's going to be an assessment because they say if you don't dock it, you're going to face a fee. What if there's no docks available? So maybe if what, what whatever the account is that had the the scooter, if it's not put back in a or the bike in a proper place, then you're going to be assessed a fee. All right, let's say you get a scooter from from like from like Sparkman Wharf and you ride it all the way to Hattricks from the middle of downtown, and there's no docking station in front of Hattricks. You just leave it there. You're going to get Dr. Fee. They're not providing the station. All or right. if they're all full. All right, I'm, running, I'm running a little late. Uh, right. I've got some office shenanigans we got to talk about. All right. And can you, te- can you text Randy? And just, tell him what? Tell him we're going to te- call him now? Text or? Randy. I'm going to call him in just a few minutes. All right. All right we've got a, an amazing update to tell you about the Fabio duck reenactment from Friday. So anyone that was upset that Fester threw the duck or tossed it lightly into Froggy's face. The duck is fine. The duck wasn't hurt. But it gets even better. Our stupid boneheaded bit from Friday reenacting the Fabio 25th anniversary face smash on the roller coaster at Busch Gardens Williamsburg 
where Fabio is bloodied, nose broken. It has such an amazing, happy ending here. It re we are heroes here on the MJ Morning Show. We'll explain in just a matter of minutes. First, though, I'm sorry. I'm running a few minutes late here. My apologies. For what? Well, no. I teased that at oh. 745, we're going to talk about a couple of things uh, regarding love in the office. A little, you know, boom, chicka, wow, wow. I, a couple of office-related love stories that we got to talk about. All right. First of all, I saw one of those... <laughs> Uh, Reddit, am I the bleep hole stories? Should I ask my wife to quit her job because she kissed her boss? <laughs> mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Why, why is that funny to you? <laughs> I mean, like, did they make out or did they, like, did, I, I need more information, but I mean, sounds kind of, kind of like, yeah, she probably should. I mean, yeah, are we <laughs> talking tongue action? Yeah, or what, what kind of kiss is a kiss? Well, well listen, <laughs> it all started a few months ago. My wife, female, 40, told me, male, 39, that her boss is madly in love with her. My wife and I laughed about it. We joked about it. I said, that's a great compliment. Good for you. Just be careful. I knew they were good friends, and I trusted my wife 110%. Hmm. Well, first of all, that percentage is a little off, so yeah, that's I mean, a problem right there. Go not ahead. 110%. <laughs> that means they really trust <laughs> Fast forward. <laughs> I thought you were having a stroke. I wish you would. Or I'm doing the lawyer and my cousin Vinny. I work your stuttering. Well, because I was about to say fat, and you guys kept talking, so I just extended. <laughs> I, I just Please. extended. Sorry to interject right. humor and commentary right. into your right. reading. Fast forward a few weeks later, her boss called her at night, 9 p.m. I said, "Just pick up. Maybe it's important." She didn't, and reacted overly. No, I'm here with you. She opened her messages and was trying to delete a message. This is the moment I grabbed the phone and read the message. She was furious, according, uh, accusing me of breaching her privacy and such. This is when I saw it. The message from him saying, I miss you, and hearts being sent back and forth. Oh. She lied that they were just friends, uh, and as I know, he is in love with her, so according to her, nothing to worry about. I made her swear on our children that they did not kiss, and there was silence. She admitted it, and days later, I heard, after asking for it, more and more details. They kissed multiple times. He kissed her multiple times on the neck and hugged her for long periods. No sex. I think I believe that part. Anyway, you have to know my wife. She's very insecure about work. She has only had jobs for one to two years. And finally, she landed <laughs> finally, this... Finally, she... <laughs> one to two years. That's what it says. Finally, she landed this job where everything was great. So I was very supportive in every way. Anyway, we came to a consensus uh, to continue working there. Uh, it's a very small company, but I found it difficult. I started to look over her shoulder. Anyway, so the bottom line is... The guy wants to know, is he the bleep hole for asking his wife to quit the job because uh, she's, like, kissing the boss and the boss is in love? Uh, you know, that's, that's a problem. Oh, I man, mean, that's I, tough. You, you yeah. got to get the hell out of that situation. All right, so that's office story number one. Office story number two, I had sex with the boss. Now he's pursuing me. What do I do? Well, what do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I think that you gave him the green light already. Yeah, I mean, come <laughs> He's on. He's pursuing you. He's pursued. I was on a business trip. One thing led to another. Maybe we could have the chickens do the uh, fixes. One thing leads to another. You know, a little chicken cluck in there. It's not chicken clucking, Fester. <laughs> it's not It's not either. It's, it's, it's tooting of a horn. It's a so, chicken. This woman on a business trip, one thing led to another, had sex with the boss. Um, I, I'm sorry, guy on the business trip. She now invites me to attend many travel events, mm. even when I have no business interest there. Uh, anyway, look, you're playing with fire. If you get involved, office romances don't work out, and especially office cheating. It's not going to work out. It's going to be bad. I have a story. Okay, so this guy who I used to work with, he was, uh, this is like years ago when I first started in TV at Bay News 9. And we did a show together, and then he told me that guys would always ask him, you're dating her, aren't you? You're dating her. And he's As like, in you? Yes, me. 
Why and would they all think that this guy at Bay News 9, when you worked there, was dating you? I don't know. But they, but he would tell me that guys would come up to him. Sex on the say, nines. <laughs> <laughs> sex, sex on the nines. All right, and, it's getting really tight in my pants here. <laughs> next, up, next update in 10 minutes. <laughs> now on the nines. And I would be like, well, no, I hope Another you- act every nine minutes. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, I'm sorry, on the nines. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Go and ahead. I was like, I hope you told them we're not dating. And he would be like, I just, you know, you know how guys are. They like. Hold on. He wanted to make the other guys jealous and by being what? Okay. But non-committal coy, or coy. being coy or, yes. or trying, like leaving it open to interpretation that you guys were hooking up. Yes. Yes. But he would say no, but he would say it in a way that like he would describe to me what he would say. I was like then they totally think we're dating if you answer like that. He'd be like, you know, I told him, no, guys, I don't dip my pit in the company ink. That's what he said. That was his line? <laughs> that was his line. You're talking I about his peener? Dip my pen in the I, company I, ink? I, uh, we, no, listen, that's enough. That's right. What is this? I, what, are we, so, what are we, newspaper men from 1880? Did, don't dip your pen in the company ink. Man. So you never had any, <laughs> no physical no, contact with him? No, he was my friend. But he would, t- he would take pleasure in telling me yes. that... All these guys think we're dating. I'm I like, news. I hope you make it clear that we're not. You know who used to do, else used to tell all his friends about his uh, sexual adventures? Vince McMahon. <laughs> <laughs> I got news for you, Roxanne. He's not your friend. The final <laughs> office story, and I've had this one in the pile for a while. Just kind of, kind of just fit in nicely. The final little office romance, little warning story, is about office goggles. I read about this. Yep. And I, I saw this I don't know, like, a, oh, no. like 10 days, two weeks <laughs> it's ago. That's exactly what it sounds like. Oh, I know. And the story essentially is if you are attracted to or you think you're in love with a coworker, <laughs> right. you're not. You just have something that in most cases, listen, I'm sure there are cases where you do fall in love, you're in love with a coworker, whatever. But there are most scenarios that involve what they call office goggles, and that's because you spend so much time with the individual, and you know, they talk about the dopamine rush, uh, et cetera, but essentially office goggles are that you're around somebody in the office, and it's not really a true romance or a true love. It's, just, it's like proximity. It's, it's just proximity. It's, it's availability, proximity, is what it is, and it's like flirty coworkers, office goggles. So that's a warning that you know the crush you might have on somebody where you work. It's not a real funness. It's not real love. It's it's the office version of beer goggles, essentially. Okay, I understand Just that mi- concept. Just minus, minus the alcohol. Minus the alcohol. Yeah. I understand that concept, but how come it doesn't work at home? Because at home, it's opposite. Like, you turn into wallpaper to your spouse, right? Are you too close your to proximity. Situ- proximity. You're too close to the situation. Hold on. You turn into wallpaper to... Uh, no, really? I, I mean, I'm not you're really saying that. You're a year plus into the marriage, no, and now you're... No, we're not a year plus. We haven't made it a year yet. Oh, hold on. When's, when's the when's the one-year anniversary? It's coming up. It's when? coming up in, in two weeks. Well, I'm, yeah. oh, okay, I'm so far off. Yeah, but anyways, I understand, like, okay, you're around someone all the time, so, like, proximity breeds attraction, but then it don't you just get sick of looking at the same thing all the time? Wouldn't that be a <laughs> counter answer to that? Like, you don't have office goggles because you see the same stuff every day. Oh, next, you're going to bring up that uh, humans or men were not bred to be monogamous. Is that going to be your next thing? No, I, right. I wasn't going in that all direction, right. but anyway. I was going to go in a direction about fester and i see fester every day and i think fester's cute uh, <laughs> so, hold on you've cute. Like, you, it's like uh, you, hold on you've thought about uh yeah. no jumping fester no i didn't say that but like he's in my proximity and he just like okay i can see his like gray flex in his in his goatee you can I smell can him the, i can see the pores of on his nose <laughs> oh, but you but can I mean, smell like, him. I, I can smell him, but I can't tell you if he's hot or not hot. I just know if he tells a good joke. I'm all like, he, okay, you look cute. All he's you're going to say is, I'm not a no. That's all you're going to say. <laughs> so I'm not a just no. like the effect that alcohol or beer, the whole beer goggles thing has on somebody, the experts just say, they suggest that being at work for sure. 40 hours a week can make 
somebody you work with maybe appear to be... There's a name for Mr. it. Mr. or Mrs. Wright. It's called... Here's what it's called. What? The Office 8. The Office 8. What does that mean? What the Office that? 8 what? Because you're around somebody and it's worked for men and women on the attractiveness scale of 1 to 10... Because you work with them and you see them often and this and that, they are just, you think of them as disproportionately more attractive oh, so, than they are. So they get a very respectable eight number. Right. When, you see eight hours? When, when the number is actually probably lower. Oh. It's the office oh. eight. Oh. And I can tell you, you work with somebody like, yeah, it's, it's lovely. But if you took them out to a club full of heavy hitters, they're a three. Uh, and then also you spend eight hours a day with them, so it's kind of like a double meaning thing. No, no. It doesn't matter if you work part-time or full-time <laughs> or work overtime. The office eight, it's a real thing. And and you know what else you don't have to deal with with your office person? Sure. Bills, kids, yeah. life stress. Yeah. But you do have to deal with work stress. Yeah. So there you go. Three little stories regarding the office. Little food for thought. Get me Randy on the phone. Randy, let her rip. It's from the Serve Pro commercial. All right, go, go ahead. Uh, so this is a great story. Anyone that might complain, if there's any animal activist that might be upset that we used a real duck in the studio to gently toss into Froggy's face, and I'm, I'm just waiting for it to happen. I'm mm. waiting for Ron, our general manager, to say, hey, um, yeah, we got a situation. We got this animal group. They're not happy with uh, the duck situation. Why are you being listen, so negative about I'm it? Just, listen, There's no feedback yet. I, I'm just saying that it wouldn't surprise me. Just spin it right? as positive. I am <laughs> spinning it as a positive. That out loud? <laughs> well, hang on. I, I'm totally spinning it as it's, a positive. It's duck awareness is what it is. The duck is alive because of our stupid bit on Friday. And again, if you have not seen the Fabio duck recreation, you can watch it in two spots. It is posted on my Instagram, Certified MJ Radio. It's the full segment video. My Instagram, Certified MJ Radio, and just look for the tile. Look for the, what do you call those things? What do you call it? It's a, not a tile, but a, a square, a box. No, it's a icon, whatever it is. Look for Fester holding the duck. Look for Fester holding the duck and click on that and watch the video. And it all goes back to, and maybe people don't remember, 25 years ago on Friday, Fabio, the male model that was used on what romance covers for those romance novels, and then he went on to do the I can't believe it's not butter commercials. Fabio was at Bush Gardens Williamsburg. It was a grand opening of a new roller coaster. Anyway, he leaves the station with his flowing blonde locks. He comes back with his nose smashed and broken and blood covering his shirt, covering his face, because a goose smashed into his face. On the roller coaster. Froggy last week said, hey, guys, it's the 25th anniversary. So we decided to recreate it. And we found a, a white duck, kind of, you know, like a stunt goose, but it's a duck, uh, from Tampa Live Poultry. And they're like a live poultry place where you can have, like, fresh poultry that they slaughter right there. It's right near the airport off of Hillsborough in Manhattan in Tampa, near near the airport. Yeah. And Taha from Tampa Life Poultry brought the duck in on Friday. And after we did the reenactment with uh, Fester tossing the duck in Froggy's face. Wait, all... wait, wait. Did you just say reenactment? Uh, re re reenactment. <laughs> Look at her. What a bully. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so after that, uh, I said live on the air, let's save this duck's life. And I solicited live on air for a listener that would take Fabio the duck. He was so, so it, sweet. So it didn't go. Oh, he was so nice. I the know. Duck I is, loved him. The duck is fantastic. He was so, cute. He was so well behaved. He was great. He didn't quack once. I mean, he didn't quack. I had to play the stupid I miss quack quack noises because the duck wouldn't quack. I, I had to keep playing this. Quack, quack. And he perfect. When he threw him at my head, it's like the duck knew just to slightly glance my face. And then he, he was a perfect actor. Uh, listen, listen, the duck was not hurt. It was a gentle talk. Fester went a little further than I instructed him. Listen, hold on. We, we got to sell. I, I couldn't just like gently place a duck. Uh, he, he barely like hit me. Yeah. Uh, anyway. I, I would call it like a, a gentle nudge. Uh, all right. So anyone that <laughs> might want to complain, the duck was fine. The duck was not hurt. The duck is in perfect condition. But the point is, if we didn't do that bit with Fester 
tossing the duck into Froggy's face on Friday, that duck would be dinner. That yeah. duck would not survive. Especially the Friday before Easter. After I did the bit, after we did the segment on Friday, I solicited phone calls. I said, will anyone take this duck and make it a pet so we can save the duck's life? Randy calls up and says, I'll take it. Randy in St. Petersburg. So, Randy, welcome to the MJ Morning Show. Welcome back. Hey, good morning, guys. How are you? Randy, how is Fabio the duck getting along in your backyard in your little animal sanctuary? Uh, Fabio and Gazelle are doing just fine. All right, now, are, are we calling it Gazelle or Giselle? No, it's Giselle. 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 After yeah. Giselle Bungeon. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. No, folks, it gets even better. Not only did Randy, the listener from St. Pete, and you work for the city of St. Pete, right? That is correct, yes. Not only did Randy take the stunt duck, Fabio, when he went to pick up the duck at Taha's Poultry Place over on uh, Manhattan in Tampa, he took another duck. So our stupid segment on Friday has saved the lives of two ducks. Wow. This is ducking incredible. It's amazing. <laughs> Ducking amazing. It is. We're heroes. Where's Mariah Carey when you need her? We are heroes. We saved this duck's life. We, we saved the duck from the dinner table. Two ducks? Two, two ducks. ducks. Not just one duck. Two ducks are alive because of our ridiculous Fabio bit. And you think the parting, the pardon, what is it? A pardon? The president pardoning the turkey? You think that's a big deal? No. Ah, no. The MJ Morning Show. Absolute heroes. Hey, PETA, guess what? Save the lives of two ducks. There's a hero. And it's called the MJ Morning Show. Stress. Yes. We need capes. So, Randy, I, I'm so thrilled about this. This is fabulous. Yeah, I'm very happy with both of them. They're both they're, they're both very friendly, especially Fabio. He's very sweet. Oh. Fabio's the best. He has oh. to be like the show mascot. Oh, that's fantastic. So, so how are they acclimating me? What are they doing for fun? What, what are their days they're, filled with? They're playing poker. <laughs> they're they're yeah. playing yeah. poker today. Well, they spend most of their day swimming around in their pool out there, their pond. Oh, oh so they have a pond. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. You have a little pond in your backyard, and yeah, they, love, they love the pond. And they're not going to fly away, right? No, because they're a farm raised. They're farm raised. They won't fly. How cute. Yeah, they right. play so, duck, duck, goose. So here's the thing about these ducks. And I was thinking about this, Randy, over the weekend when you told me you have a pond for them. Since these ducks were essentially hatched in captivity, I don't know that they've ever swam in a pond before. They, they, they took to the pond yeah, pretty well. Uh, they, they're uh, sure they know yeah, how to. Yeah, like what, what are you, to afraid water? of a duck drowning? No, but I'm what saying. Do you want, what do you want? Like, call some like swim school and get swim lessons for the duck? Ducks are naturally inclined to be waterfowl, and they've never really right. been in water before because they've been in captivity. You're foul. Right. <laughs> so, you, can, you can tell they've been in captivity because they're doing a lot of stretching their wings out, flapping them around because they got a lot of room to run around now. Oh, that's uh -huh. great. Instead of being caged yeah. oh, nice. and just like yeah. you know, a day or two away from being dinner. So, listen, right. I, I'm so thrilled about this. Our dumb little stunt. Yes. And, folks, I'm telling you, go watch the Fabio mm. Duck in the Face reenactment from Friday's show. If you missed it, go to my Instagram, Certified MJ Radio, and look for Fester Holding the Duck. Or go to, uh, on Instagram, you can go to MJ Morning Show as well. Give both accounts a follow. Follow MJ Morning Show on Twitter or on uh, Instagram and follow... Uh, certified MJ Radio. That's my personal account. Randy, thanks again, buddy. You're a gentleman for stepping up to the plate, and uh, I, I can't thank you enough for saving the Ducks' lives. Well, thank you all, too. I love the show, and keep up doing what you're doing. Great. Thank, thank you, buddy. Have a good one. And thanks to Taha. Thanks to Tampa Live Poultry. Yeah. And I bet you the chicken that you picked up was fantastic. Oh, my God. Yep. He said to me, he goes, hey, you want chicken for dinner? And I was like, okay. He goes, pick one. And I'm like, I can't pick one. He goes, I said, you pick it. He reaches down and picks the chicken. All right, listen, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't yeah. want to downer here. Precious chicken listen, I've ever we, had. We, we, but we saved two ducks. Yeah. All right. So, all right. <laughs> did you see the video of a woman stealing like Easter eggs off the porch of someone's house in Pasco? Yeah. What is wrong Mickey. with this crazy? What is going on here? A woman, according to the Pasco County Sheriff's Office. Stole Easter eggs off a house on the porch 
at 5.47 a.m. on Easter Sunday. On Easter Sunday, a woman is lurking and prowling and rips eggs off somebody's porch at 5.47 in the morning, according to their ring camera. The Pasco County Sheriff's Office said they're looking into the matter after they got reports that multiple items were stolen from various homes in the Holiday Gardens area. Why is this lady hunting for eggs and ripping stuff off people's porches at 547 in the morning yesterday morning on Easter Sunday? What, are they decorative big eggs or just the little ones that... Like little ones for the kids. You put yeah. the eggs out the night before thinking you're going to have an Easter egg hunt or what something. What is it? What is it? Tell me, tell me. We, we, She's we picking know. up eggs of various sizes. What? Oh, so they must have been like decorative. Mm. And then, I don't know what's going on in Florida. So it's not only that. Then we have the shoplifting story. <laughs> this is over in Flagler County. The woman is from Sanford, Florida. That's uh, home of the auto train, right? Yes. Oh, that's the whole George Zimmerman and Trayvon area as well. They, they prefer to be known yeah. for the auto train. Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. you're right. We have a Sanford woman arrested up in Flagler County. She was pulled over, right? She admitted walking out of a Palm Coast Walmart and stealing just a whole bunch of goods, according to the Flagler County Sheriff's Office. In the release that was put out, according to Click Orlando, Orlando TV station, deputies said they were called to Walmart last Monday at around 6.26 p.m. to investigate a theft. According to the sheriff's office, the caller explained that the woman, later identified as Amber McCann, 30, had passed all points of sale, refused to show a receipt with a cart full of items. She reportedly stole $1,030 in goods, right? And then moved all the stolen goods into her car and then fled. She realized, I guess, that somebody was watching her. So she stuffed all the goods in her car, then fled on foot because she was being watched. Deputies were called, Flagler County. They arrive. They find the vehicle which had all the stolen items in the back seat. Then they spotted the woman walking back toward the store. After the deputies made contact with McCann, she admitted that she'd carried the loaded cart full of stolen items to, a, to her car, claiming that it was just a random car that she found. She also claimed that she stuck her purse inside. So her purse is now what? in the This Her story is just a pile of crap, all right? Oh, yeah, I put all the stolen items in a random car. Oh, and I put my purse in the random car. It's her car, right? According to investigators, McCann told them she was playing a game called 21, which involves a person grabbing as much merchandise as they can from a store and then walk out without paying while trying not to get caught. You're trying to steal 21 items? Right, first of all, I never heard of a... Did she just make that up as well? A game called 21 where you steal stuff from a... What? Is that a game? Right, wait a minute. It gets better. There's audio from the, the sheriff's office body cams, and not only did they find the stolen items in the car, then they find drug paraphernalia, they found meth, and the quantity of the meth was, like, intent to distribute... So what a dope who if listen I don't condone stealing I hate a thief I want thieves shoplifters to be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law why because it jacks up the prices for all of us and you shouldn't take someone that something that doesn't belong of to you. Of course not. That, that goes without saying. Yes, Roxanne mm -hmm. with the public service but announcement. Yeah. But it increases prices for all of us. All the shoplifting to the tune of tens and tens of billions of dollars a year. So you have audio of this woman being arrested? So, oh, yeah, yeah, you got to hear the audio is the best part of the story. So while they're removing the stolen merchandise from the car, they discovered partially burnt marijuana cigarettes. Then inside, the that was in the vehicle center console. They found a digital scale. They found hash, a glass pipe with burnt residue, empty baggies of marijuana, methamphetamine, and I guess a muscle relaxant or so uh, without a prescription. So 
Uh, they found a, uh, oh, inside the locked, uh, there was a safe in the car. So I, 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 I guess there was a, inside a locked safe, they found several one ounce silver bars. <laughs> Okay, that's what, what, about 20 bucks each? Uh, I mean, what, 20 bucks? No, silver's about 35 bucks an ounce, I think, these days. Is it? Yeah, well, go go check spot silver ounce price. Silver. See what the spot silver price was on Friday. I'd say 34 bucks, 35 bucks an ounce. Uh, oh, no, 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 hang on, no, 25 bucks an ounce. Yeah. I I, I was over. Yeah, so, yeah, on the on the mountain climber game, I lose. Yeah, yeah, Fester, you you win. I know my precious medals. Or the showcase showdown. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, you know, gold's in an all time record, right? Gold. Now here's the here's the audio. And the the cops are running body cam, right? Listen to this. Is this your car over here? No. All right, would you come over here with me? <laughs> is, this, is this your car over here? No. <laughs> Her purse is inside the car. Is this your car over here? No. All right, would you come over here with me? Where? Over in this lane. For what? We're doing an investigation right now. Apparently somebody walked out with a car. car. I put it in a random car? Yeah. Yeah, that was me. Okay, would you come over by the car with us? Oh, whose car is it? What do you mean? <laughs> whose car is it? I don't know. Me neither. Okay, so where's all your stuff you took out of the store? And I just put, put it, it I put it in a random car that was open. In a random car that was open? Yeah. For what? What do you mean for what? Because y'all come, y'all was coming. Okay, so you just put all the stuff in a random car you didn't yeah, know? Yeah, it's a game I was playing. Okay. Yeah. What for? Um, just for the hell of it. Okay. You got any ID on you? No. All right, I left it in the car. So you left your ID in some random car? <laughs> yeah. My whole bag. All my All right, makes sense. <laughs> I mean, yeah, makes sense. what a ridiculous, stupid story. It goes on. Okay. What kind of vehicle were you driving? It's like gray or silver or something. What kind of make? Model. Um, I don't know. You have no idea what kind of car you're No, driving? because y'all were coming and I just ran up to the car and put it It's a game that we play. It's called 21. It's basically like you go and steal all the shit that you can steal and then you get out without getting caught. So well, I did it one other time than this time, but I got caught this time. So now I got to figure out where my purse is and where my merchandise is because now I got to give all the merchandise back to Walmart. Well, it's not really a game. Yeah, it's, it it's theft. To you, that's it theft. It's, so a, it's, a, it's, a, it's fun, too. It's really fun. Oh, going to jail is fun. Okay. Well, I suppose. Am I going to jail? Well, we'll see how much stuff you took. It's a lot of <laughs> Let me. Huh? Oh, she, she says, what? oh, yeah, it's a, lot of, it's a lot of bleep that she took. You know what she's doing here? She will take the rap for the stolen goods. She's trying to distance herself from the meth, the uh, non. The, right. uh, the the prescription medication that she doesn't have a script for, she's try. She knows that the charges for the drugs are going to be far worse than the theft of the merch. So she's trying to distance herself from the car. But listen, the whole thing collapses. Obviously, that's really good thinking on her part, though. <laughs> if you're a defense attorney, are you happy that she's doing this? No, she's but it's her car. Yeah, but are you happy that she's trying to cast some doubt on it? You're out of it. Right, listen to this. All right, here we go. But my boyfriend car? doesn't know that I steal. All right, so then finally they figure, I guess it's her boyfriend's car, and then here she goes. But, but my boyfriend car? doesn't know that I steal. Okay. And he doesn't know that I put all the in the car neither. Okay. So I yeah, will be really in trouble with him, but that's the, that's the so thing. So what, what kind of car is it? I don't remember, because it's what, a rental. What color? I just got the rental car. What color? I thought you said it was someone random's car. Yeah, I know. I lied to you. Yeah, that's my boyfriend's car. He ran in the car, and he was shopping, and I had found all the that I wanted because they told me to play 21, and my okay. boyfriend's older than me, so he doesn't play that And I started playing the game. This is my first time playing the game, and I put the in the back of the car, and I saw you guys coming, so I walked off. So she does. She had a scale in there. She had meth in there. She had a, a prescription drug in there with no prescription. She had marijuana. Uh, what a, what a joke! So it's the boyfriend's car. She, Twenty one. She's not playing any games. She just ripped off a thousand dollars plus worth of goods. What a Crazy. piece of crap! Yeah. Uh, right now, I need to figure out how much dollar value you stole from Walmart. Probably a lot, cause I took a lot of. <laughs> okay, so basically, you got to put everything in the cart and ring it up and find out what the value of it, and yep. then what's the next move. And then I then depending on the dollar amount is if you go to jail or not. Well, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty sure I'm going to go to jail because it's a lot of <laughs> Yeah. Good, good deduction there, Sherlock. Well, that's interesting. Glass nice. pipes. Oh, nice. Here it is. Listen. And then, if I had to guess. No, so. we got white crystals. Oh. oh. We got white crystals, gobo pipe, and a safe. Oh, so white crystals, the safe with the gold and silver in there, or whatever the hell was in the safe. 
a game of 21. Did she just make that up? Yeah, I tried to Google it, it and find there, a game of 21. Is there any shoplifting game called 21? Or did she just make this crap up to try to cover for uh, the fact that there were drugs, which are going to bring her uh, uh, probably a stiffer, harsher sentence and penalty than the, the stolen goods to the tune of $1,030? I think she made it up because every time that I search Game of 21 to steal stuff, she's the only thing that pops up. I mean, it looks like she stole just crap, though. I mean, here it looks like a, a 12-can pack of dog food. What a dope. She looks like she stole a bottle of vinegar. All right, guys, you've got to see video and hear this story. This is unbelievable. Do you know those gigantic saw blades they use to, like, cut the street? You ever see that? You know when they're you know when they have to cut the street like the machine yeah cut, it's it's like, like a, a it's like a giant radial saw what do you, you know a, a right yeah. a, 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 saw. a radial saw a saw you so what are those called that we have the the round spinning blade it's a, it's a radial radial saw, radial saw right yes. did I say that right it just didn't yeah. sound right so you have a radial saw and they have the giant ones when they need to fix I'm sorry circular saw not a radio it's a circular saw. So for roads, when they have to cut a piece of the road, let's say to fix a, a broken water main or you got a sewage pipe leak, leak or whatever, they have those massive circular saws where the blades are like four feet. They're massive. There was a construction crew working on the side of the street and some schmuck didn't tighten it down or it malfunctioned. The blade flies off at ridiculous RPMs and flies through a parking lot and misses a guy walking into a convenience store by seconds. And the saw blade, you got to see the size of it. Fester, I have it posted up on mjmorningshow.com. Okay. Go to, folks, You, th- if you watch one video today, you've got to see this. We have it posted on mjmorningshow.com, then just scroll down like one row, and you'll see as heard on the MJ Morning Show. As heard on the MJ Morning Show. Hey, um, uh, Andrew, you sure it's there? Because Fester's on the website right now. Uh, refresh it. Go ahead and refresh. Okay, let me go back. We're just having... No, no, don't go back. Well, you, I, you, I need ref- the, no, you need to refresh. No, you need to refresh. I clicked the yeah. first link after. All right, so... And you I've can't got audio. See it. It's going so fast you can't even see it. It is un. Did you find it? Not yet. Oh, it's jeez. I don't know what's going on with our. Uh... Hey Andrew, can you? I'm refreshing. I'm refreshing. I'm refreshing. We're, we, we're having a major cash problem. All uh, right, you have it on your page. We don't have it in the studio. We just gotta. We gotta figure this out. We gotta solve this problem. Hang on. Let me see if we have it now. I've been saying that about this place for a while. All right. Uh, no, it's not. Anyway, so folks, we we don't have it in the studio. Can you? Uh, Andrew, can you fix this, please? I want to play the audio. This happened in Oregon, and a guy narrowly escapes death. He wasn't even trying. He didn't even know, did he? Shane Remke was going into the Quick Trips neighborhood market in Eugene, Oregon, on Thursday when this huge circular concrete saw with a four-foot blade. Oh, so you got a circular saw. What are, what are those blades on a circular saw? Maybe like what, eight, nine, ten inches or whatever. Yeah, imagine not a, that a four <laughs> foot blade flies off the construction crew's road cutting circular saw, and at at thousands of RPMs, flies off. This thing would have stuck. It would have cut him in half. Maybe it would have gone right through his body. Oh, right? he, absolutely. That's what it would have done. It would have just gone just instant over. Yeah. It is unbelievable. So here's a little bit of the news report from, uh, what channel was this? Uh, this is from uh, KEZI in Eugene, Oregon. Listen. It happened right here at Quick Trip Neighborhood Market. A four-foot concrete saw came flying down this parking lot and landing right here, just inches from the door, seconds after somebody had just walked in. I mean, obviously it wasn't my time, but 
<laughs> yeah, it's probably the closest I've ever experienced it. Shane Remke is still shaking just thinking about how he narrowly escaped death on Thursday after a four-foot concrete saw blade came flying from a nearby construction site, slamming into the wall of this liquor store just seconds after Remke had just walked in. So I was walking into the store here, I put my handle on the door, and uh, I heard a loud bang and yelling over here at the corner just as a cloud of smoke pops up and i see a guy fall into the ditch <laughs> and a four foot blade hurling at me <laughs> as i'm walking through the doorway a traffic contractor who witnessed the incident says a loose bolt and a possible operator error Whoop. may have caused the giant saw blade to come loose and spin away at high speeds whoops straight for the liquor store whoops oh my god i, 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 I was in tears all night like yeah it was it was, it was petrifying i was I was shaking in the store. So you got the surveillance video. You got to see it. If you go to MJ Morning Show, hey, uh, Andrew, yeah, it, can it, you it, get our IT guy when he comes in? I get mean, the it man. Get the it man. We just constantly have problems with uh, the cash on this computer that we we can't bring stuff up. Uh, anyway, so folks, go to MJ Morning Show. Andrew, I believe you. You don't need to spin your monitor. Andrew has it on his thing. Folks, go to MJMorningShow.com. Click on As Heard on the MJ Morning Show and then see the news report. And there's surveillance video from a security camera, and you can see the blade, this four-foot... This is like, I'm telling you, this is a horror movie. Yeah. This... Uh, it's like a Final Destination yeah. movie or something. Somebody, yeah, somebody could like get the idea to do a horror movie based on... There was like a movie, an awful movie back in like the late 70s or early 80s called Driller Killer. And the guy used to go around drilling people with, like, a battery-powered portable drill. Oh, they could call it saw. Well, I, I was thinking this is, <laughs> this is the real saw. Yeah, it really is. That's what I was thinking, Froggy. I was about to get to that. Oh, I wish it would have hit. I, don't, I mean, I don't wish it would have hit what, him. What? I don't wish it would have hit him. What are you saying? But I wish I could see what that would have done to the human body. Oh, it Froggy, that's, 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 that's twisted and more, but that's sick. It would have turned it into two pieces. That is sick. It wouldn't have cut him up in half. It, totally. It's an, only a four-foot blade. This blade, I'm telling you right now, the speed that this thing flew off the f massive circular saw road-cutting device. <laughs> Folks, this is a four-foot blade. Imagine trying to think of, um, you know, to compare it to, like a, a round trash can lid, but maybe like uh, like 30% bigger, 50% <laughs> bigger. I mean, it's, it's larger than a yard. Yeah, but it went in long ways. It would have cut them up long yeah, ways. Yeah, it it, it it flew off and it rolled like a tire. So yeah, it was going, see? It was going straight. This thing might have taken his leg off. Mm. It might have stuck. It might have gone right up his butt crack. That's what I was just going to say. Yeah, it might have split him right it, through it, the butt. It might have split him right through his crack. It might have like made the crack even bigger. A way bigger. Like all the like, way to the front. Sliced him, yeah. Oh. Then it might have sliced his front groin. It might have gone right through him. Like a bagel cutter. What do you mean white oh might have? God. It would have. What an awful... T but this guy is so lucky. Uh, did the other guy get fired? I mean, you ought to see the, the wood was taken out of the front of the store. Anyway, yeah, somebody ought to lose their job for this. That is unacceptable. And then the road crew's like, oh, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Sorry. That's just apps. Oh, uh, now now Andrew just found an update. Uh, the contract to doing work for the city of Eugene has been removed pending the investigation. Yeah, good idea. That seems appropriate. Yeah, making sure they tighten down the bolts on their gig. Oh, my God. That video is insane watching this fly through the parking lot. Anyway, go to MJMorningShow.com. Second row, look for As Heard on the MJ Morning Show, and then the link to the news story from Eugene, Oregon ought to be there. What did it stick into? Like the wood neck, the wooden yeah. frame next How to the door. How did it knock? Uh, imagine it went through the glass door. Yeah. It didn't. It, it didn't. It went, we have the video. It went, we have the you video. It didn't stick in the glass? For, why don't you oh, walk Jesus. over and watch the video on Fester's computer? Oh. Okay. We oh, have I, I, the stop, footage. Stop. I hear it. Here, right, go back. Go back and play the blade. Boom. Boom. Right there into the door. It's stuck in the glass. No, the it's wood. stuck in the wood frame of the uh, oh. right next to the door. Froggy, go look. You missed the. the yeah, stop making this right, crap right up. Right there. It's stuck right there. Oh. And it took chunks of wood out. This oh. guy is so lucky. It's kind of like the folks that, uh, you know, unfortunately, <laughs> you know, the construction crew on the Baltimore Bridge. You know, those six guys, yeah. you know, 
they were in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah. But you had a series of cars and trucks that made it over the bridge with just seconds to spare. In fact, I have additional audio here. Larry DeSantis. I don't think there's any relation to Governor DeSantis no, here. It's, in, a, it's a cousin. Yeah. Anyway, Larry DeSantis clocked out from his bakery job in Pasadena up in Maryland at 1.18 a.m. on Tuesday last week, drove to Herman's Bakery, where he's the head uh, baker. While on the bridge, he slowed down to watch out for the highway workers that were filling the potholes. He was driving between the construction cones, so he slowed down. As he drove, he did not notice that the ship was underneath veering toward the bridge support. Didn't notice the black smoke billowing out. Made it off the bridge at about 127, and about a minute later, that's when the ship hit the piling, and that's when the bridge collapsed. And this is Larry DeSantis. If I was one minute later, I probably wouldn't be here now. When I was getting on, there was a tractor trailer, well, a tractor trailer, but it only had a tractor, not the trailer part of it. I got out in front of him or whatever, and we both got on the bridge. There was a police car when I went by right before the toll bridge. From what I understand, they knew something was going to happen, so he was waiting to get the word to stop the traffic. So I guess I was like the last one that went through. While I'm sitting at the light, the woman from here called me and said, Where are you at? Because she knew I was, you know, she said, Did you go home? Or you? I said, No, I just went over the bridge. She said, well, it just collapsed. Now, I think my best guess was he was the third to last vehicle because he claims that there was a tractor trailer that he passed or just a tractor without the trailer. He claims that he passed a tractor, no trailer. So it was him, then the tractor, but then also, remember we noticed a white tractor trailer yeah. going across, which might have been the last vehicle just before the collapse. Wow. So you got a bunch of close calls. For those individuals, uh, unfortunately, the uh, construction workers, what, two were, two, uh, one guy was virtually unscathed uh, in his vehicle. You know, the two that survived, I think they were all in their trucks because they were on like a, a little snack break at 127 or 128 when the bridge collapsed when the ship hit it. So they were in their vehicles on a break. Yeah. And two survived, one virtually unscathed. The other one had serious injuries, but two survived. And then six went missing, six dead. And then I believe they've recovered two bodies now. There are four that still remain uh, not found. But, uh, I mean, you got the saw blade, you got the bridge, you got just uh, people just narrowly escaping death. It's just, just some morbid stuff. And then... They start those big cranes came in. I guess the the largest crane able to lift the most amount of weight on the entire East Coast was brought in. So the cranes have arrived, and they're gonna have to have like welding crews cut sections of the bridge to then lift them up by crane to try to open that channel back up to open up the port of Baltimore. Which you know we're gonna see potentially supply chain issues. Like it wasn't enough with COVID. Now, the Paul, the Port of Baltimore is a huge port. Have they indicated which sectors? I know we said it's a big port for importing cars. Any other th- Yeah, products? It's the, Apparently, it's, Baltimore is the largest port in the USA for uh, automobiles coming right. in from overseas. It's like, uh, like 850,000 cars a year come in to the Port of Baltimore. The most cars enter the United States from foreign imports through Baltimore than any other port in the United States. You know, uh, cruise ships. Yeah. There were a couple of cruise ships out of Baltimore that the ships had to go to Norfolk, you know, my hometown. So the the ships had to go to Norfolk, and then they had to get bussed up to Baltimore. Like thousands, seriously, thousands of cruise ship passengers went to Norfolk and then Oh. Uh, had to get on a bus to get driven like two and a half hours up to Baltimore. Planes, trains, and automobiles. Three, you know, th- two and a half, three hours. That's unbelievable. Wow. Hey, uh, the P. Diddy pile. Oh, also the AT&T data breach. You saw that, right? 
What happened with AT&T? Oh, let me do that quickly. Yeah, tell me about that, because I'm an AT&T person, and I didn't feel like reading the article. I was like, I'll get my news. Oh, really? So bad news, just look away? Yeah. Uh, I like that. 73 million AT&T customers apparently had their personal data stolen and posted on the dark web, according to AT&T. Millions. Millions. 73 million current and former AT&T customers had their leaked data, including social security numbers, posted on the dark web earlier this month. Massive investigation by uh, cybersecurity experts. The compromised data appears to be from 2019 or earlier and included information of roughly 7.6 million current customers and 65 million former customers. Hold on. How does AT&T have 65.4 million former customers? Yeah. Delete those files. Wait, wait, hold on, where did they but where did they go? Oh, did that's they go a good to question. did they go yeah. to T-Mobile? Did they go to Verizon? They went to Walkie Talkies. <laughs> they went to Boost Mobile. <laughs> I mean, who's, who's the actor with the mint thing? What's his name? Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. What? Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. Yes, Andrew. Yeah, does AT&T assume any responsibility if something happens? Well, they yeah. should. Yeah. And so how do you find out if you're one of these customers per se? I have the list. Roxanne Wilder. Up up here you are, right here. (laughs) If you're a customer of AT&T, it looks like you're on the list. Yeah, Roxanne Wilder. 7.6 million. How many customers do they have? Well, were you a customer in 2019 or earlier? Yes. Well, you're compromised. So Hmm. what kind of information do they have about me now on the dark web? They have all your medical records. That I run through AT&T. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. No, they, they have your social security number. I don't think I told AT&T my social security number. You, they probably have. They have yeah. your Peloton password. Yep. I think, if you, I think if you finance the phone, they do. They have it. Really? Yeah. Darn it. They have your OnlyFans password. <laughs> yeah. So the leaked information may have included customers' names, email, mailing addresses, phone numbers, social security number, dates of birth, AT&T account numbers, passwords, etc., it is not yet known whether the data in those fields originated from AT&T or one of the vendors. AT&T reset affected customers' passwords after TechCrunch, the website, alerted the company. So yeah. TechCrunch, the website, has to say, hey, AT&T, tons of data, a trove of data is now on the dark web dumped on there. Wow. So... Hey, listen, this comes after, uh, you know, AT&T hasn't been having a good month or so because you remember that, remember the AT&T cell service went out for hours? No texting, no cell. It was like up to 12 hours outage for some people. That was what? About a month ago, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With that whole uh, outage situation. Then we get to the Diddy pile. You know, this Diddy story, it just... It's going to it's going to be like the Tiger Woods story where every day and I don't want to compare what Tiger did to what he's the illegal things that he's done. But every day something new is going to happen. Right. Yeah. For like two months, it's going to be new information every day, Mm -hmm. you know, diddling out. Yeah. But uh, the consensus is that, you know, he, he might be he might be done. Innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Without a doubt, absolutely, but done in the court of public opinion. Well, career-wise, and you know, from a legal standpoint, he might be, he might be toast. So here's the latest from the Diddy pile. Now, folks have had time to like dip into the lawsuit. Uh, what is his name? Lil Rod, Rodney Lil Rod Jones a producer who worked with Diddy and on February 27th of this year, Combs was sued. It just, it seems like everything is hitting and all kinds of stuff against Sean Diddy Combs is coming out of the woodwork on February 27th. This is according to Variety. I'm sorry, Rolling Stone. I've got a Variety story as well. Rolling Stone reported on this. February 27th, Combs was sued by producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones for $30 million for sexual assault. The producer worked with Combs on his last uh, album, the, the, love of, uh, the Love Album. 
Is that his last one? I guess. I, mean, uh, I, I didn't know if I, I bought his last one or uh, not. Says he was subjected to sexual misconduct for the duration of the production process. Also claims that Combs owes him $50,000 for his work on the Grammy-nominated album. Jones's 70-page lawsuit filed in the Southern District in New York alleges that while working on the album and living with Combs in New York, California, and Florida, Combs repeatedly groped his anus and his crotch. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, I don't know that word. That's very and the specific. way that you said Just it, say too. butt. It's very specific. No, no, not the butt. Dude. Combs repeatedly groped his anus and crotch without consent mm. and attempted to groom him into accepting a homosexual relationship. Is does did he go both ways? Is that yeah, the other? Yeah, I think See, so. I, I I didn't know that. He likes to diddy the boys. I ale- Fester. Fester. Allegedly, you want to get sued, dude? Me and Lil Rod aren't friends at all. No. So attempted to groom him for a homosexual relationship. This is in the lawsuit by showing him explicit videos claiming it was normal practice in the music industry. He claims that Combs would walk around the house naked and force him to watch him shower and alleges that when he told Combs' chief of staff, Christina Corum, about Combs' actions, he was told, you know, Sean will be Sean. That's just Sean being Sean. Oh, Sean being Sean. Oh, Sean, that butt rubber. All right, here's the meat. Ooh, maybe I shouldn't say that. All right, listen to this. The lawsuit implicates others, including Combs' son, Justin, who accu- who's accused of procuring underage girls for parties where Combs drugged visitors and secretly recorded their sex acts. Jones claims he was drugged at a party and woke up naked, dizzy, and confused in bed with two sex workers and Mr. Combs. He claims that Combs frequently displayed guns as an intimidation tactic and threatened to eat Mr. Jones's face. What? Huh. Well, I mean, the, in eating the lawsuit, the, eating the face part is kind oh, of like maybe it's my. hyperbole. Is that the right word? Then listen to this. Sean Diddy Combs owes nearly a hundred million dollars in mortgages on luxury L.A. Miami mansions that were raided by the feds. How the heck? He has nearly a hundred million outstanding in mortgages. Well, hold on, is it is, is he overdue on them, or he just financed his elaborate house? Sounds like he's leveraged, ridiculous. Oh. Sounds like he's uh, I don't know if he is he cash rich or is he cash poor. The embattled rapper took out eight bank loans totaling a whopping one hundred forty million dollars to pay for the sprawling properties. Wow, I mean it's just one after another. Uh, Suge Knight. <laughs> Remember, oh, yeah. remember the the rap bad boy Suge Knight who allegedly dangled Vanilla Ice off of the balcony of like a a ten story apartment in Miami. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, what does Suge have to add to this? Well, they're enemies at first. Are, are they still enemies? Let's hear what he has to say. Uh, Suge Knight is warning his longtime rival. Yeah, there you go. Sean Diddy Combs that his life's in danger. Yeah, he says that they're gonna get you if they can. The clip obtained by TMZ was allegedly an outtake from the Death Row Records founder's podcast, Collect Call, which he hosts from a California state prison yeah. where he's serving 28 years for voluntary manslaughter. You can host a podcast in jail? <laughs> what the hell? Jail sounds better and better. Uh, it's, yeah, I listen to that pod sometimes. It's the podcast from the old cell block. <laughs> How's the echo in there? I mean, like it- when he's talking, they do a cartoon of like a boss <laughs> sitting at a desk. So it looks like he's like just sitting at a desk. Uh, feds now, according to the New York Post yesterday, feds are set to widen the Diddy probe. Oh, boy. that Those are the wrong choice of words. They're going to widen oh. the sex probe <laughs> over new claims that he boasted about shooting people, bribing jurors, and using J-Lo as a drug mule. <gasps> I'm sorry, as a gun mule. What? Yeah. Remember the back of the day? Bribing, they dated, yeah. Bribing jurors and using J-Lo as a gun mule. Mm-hmm. I mean, did they, like, stuff guns in her butt? Well, I mean, probably, like, J-Lo... in her Louis Vuitton luggage oh. or something. I don't know. That's, that's crazy. Wow. But that's the big overreaching question is... Who else is this going to lead to? Was this just like, this is our guy, this is our, we're taking down no. Diddy? Jay-Z or, apparently is involved somehow. Right, or is allegedly. this allegedly leading to other 
even bigger, well, more dastardly deeds. Listen to this. Almost 25 years ago, just after 2.30 a.m. on a cold winter night, Three NYPD detectives were called to the Midtown North Precinct. Rap impresario Sean Combs, then known as Puffy, his girlfriend Jennifer Lopez, his bodyguard Anthony Wolf Jones, oh. and rapper Jamal Shine Barrow had been arrested following a shooting inside a Times Square club that wounded three bystanders. The cops found Lopez, then 30, cuffed in the cage. Combs was also in the station. On West 54th Street, his plans for a spectacular celebration of the new millennium a few days later temporarily on hold. Why are you reading it like that? I think it's very rude. Would you rather me do it like the A&E guy or the, the guy from Dateline? Well, Keith Morrison. Do it like you And normal. J-Lo was cuffed and stuffed. No, no. Can you do it like the guy from the Smuckers commercial? With a name like and J-Lo was smuggling guns in her butt. I like that. With a name like, yeah, like that. I read it. Uh, no, I heard a video of a guy talking, saying that he was based. He's basically like a real life gangster. Like he has people killed. He brought, like you said, he bribes judges. Like he's the real deal. He's like the Godfather. Well, you know who his dad is, right? You know who who Sean Combs' dad. His story. No. Oh, this is crazy. He was like the the movie American Gangster was made after. Oh, him. really? Oh, I didn't he know that. He was shot by. Because people thought they thought he was an informant. American Gang. That was a great movie. That yeah. was with uh, wasn't Denzel in that? Yes. Yeah, that's yes. a good that's a good movie. That's All John's right. dad is who wow. he's inspired by. All right, couple of pieces of audio. This is old video of Diddy on the whole music industry. I'm gonna give it to you raw. Parents make sure that you don't get f- straight up. There's a lot of f- going on in the entertainment industry, the music industry. Everybody's getting caught up into something. I'm, I'm, I'm cured now, though, everybody. I'm cured. Everything's good. You know, y'all can have me over for dinner. Everything is good. Huh? Then listen to LeBron. This is LeBron talking about a Diddy party. Oh, hey, everybody know ain't no party like a Diddy party, so. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah. I wonder if LeBron's going to be pulled into this or LeBron's going to be asked, hey, so tell us about these Diddy you parties. Know what? It's not like that. Diddy threw great parties. I remember when the Super Bowl was in town, every, we were trying to figure out how he could sneak into <gasps> Diddy's white were party. Were you at Diddy's party? Oh, yeah, his parties are great. Yeah. People <laughs> get they, they were big parties. I mean, they, they were something that, <gasps> that they were an event around. He had Super Bowl parties in every yeah. town. Yeah, Festa at Diddy's party? Yeah. He would have been on a, yeah, Festa would have been on a table with an apple in his mouth. No. At, at, <laughs> he served me to be the tray for all the sushi, and they ate it off my nips. And <laughs> oh, oh, he, oh, he's stuck. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's very fetishy. That's how I met Fat Joe. <laughs> anyway, just a whole bunch of Diddy stuff. I think he's in a lot of trouble. Uh, yeah, I think I so. I think he's headed R. Kelly direction. I think he's headed Epstein's direction. Yeah, that too. All right. Uh, 854 at the MJ Morning Show. This uh, wraps up over an hour and 20 minutes of nonstop MJ here on the MJ Morning Show on Q105. Got uh, almost an hour to go. Uh, the 9 o'clock hour straight ahead. And you never miss the 9 o'clock hour. Make sure you take us into work with you folks. Listen to the MJ Morning Show at work because I don't want to have them turn the 9 o'clock hour into all music. You don't want that to happen, do you? All right, so make sure you bring the MJ Morning Show into work with you uh, every day, folks. Uh, 8.55, International Diamond Center, IDC, is the gem of jewelry stores here in the town.
Dan Fester, Froggy, Andrew, the producer, here on a Monday, April 1st, April Fools. Uh, of course, we don't partake in April Fool shenanigans, so one of our pledges to you is you never have to worry about us pulling some kind of prank. Yeah, the, the 7-Eleven thing, have they revealed that as a prank yet with the, uh, the what, hot dog, dirty seltzer water flavor and, what, mustard and ketchup-flavored uh, sparkling waters at 7-Eleven? I think it's one water, <laughs> hot dog water with hints of mustard and ketchup. No, I thought, mm. they, were, I thought they were going to do a ketchup and mustard sparkling water as well. Look, or, or is it? Is it just one water? I 
it was I saw one can anyway. on the socials it, and that, it looked gross and I'm like I, this is a joke. Yeah, I, it sounds headache inducing. It's obviously an April Fools joke that 7-Eleven the big bite hot dog sparkling water to taste like like boiled hot dog dirty water. Uh I got a question. Jizz. April Fools Day. Yes. Is the favorite holiday of which animal? Hmm. April Fool's Day is the favorite holiday of which animal? Hmm. Ducks? Close. Ducks and they like quack hmm. quack jokes or something? Hmm. hmm. Trying to think. All right, Froggy. All right, l- lay your joke on us, Froggy. A silly goose. <laughs> See? Isn't that funny? God. You're going to have to get those reviewed. Why was everyone so <laughs> tired on April 1st? I have a couple of <laughs> April Fool's jokes that have backfired. Because they just finished a long 31-day march. <laughs> Why doesn't Texas sink into the Gulf of Mexico? Because Oklahoma sucks. Oh, wait. That doesn't make sense. What? That's not April Fool's joke. That's not April Fool's joke. <laughs> That's just a fact. What are you reading from? Awful joke. Repeat. Oh, yeah, these are bad jokes. Uh, let, let, me, let me let me move along here. For thank you, Froggy. I like that Texas one. Though. That, thank you, Froggy. Yeah, right. Think about it. So I do have some <laughs> April Fool's jokes that have gone wrong. Uh, some corporate attempts. So Seven Eleven. I think they're launching actually some new real flavors, but the hot dog water flavor. That's clearly an April Fool's joke, right? Right. And then Seven Eleven. Also, they they've done April Fool's jokes in the past. Hold on to that thought. I'll get to that in a second, but I don't want to get too far away from Diddy. There was one other thing with Diddy that I didn't get a chance to mention. So one more fact that's coming to light on the whole Sean Diddy Combs situation is that his director of security, this is crazy, crazy. Diddy's director of security is Fahim Mohammed, who apparently was Michael Jackson's head of security at the time of his death and found Michael Jackson dead on the floor. So my, the guy oh that was God. head of Michael Jackson security is now the head of security for Sean Diddy Combs? Mm. Is that like a good thing to have on your resume? I don't think so. That you were you supervised Michael Jackson security when he died? Where was Conrad? I thought he was there too. Maybe he called Conrad. I think Conrad just got the hell out of there. I think he's, he's, Michael he's, Jackson died in the middle of the night. He didn't die that second. He went to sleep and then died. Yeah, but Conrad I remember the left. calls from Conrad. He was like, I don't care. So we all know it. Also, at Michael Jackson's place and all the allegations over the years, we all know what was alleged to have happened at Michael Jackson's place oh, yeah. with all the you know, visitors, and boys, and you know all the, those allegations over the years and the lawsuits, the legal action there. Michael Jackson on trial, and then we know what allegedly happened there, and Michael's head of security is now Sean Diddy Combs' head of security? (sighs) Listen, I'm not implying anything, but I've got head-scratching questions. God, there's so much sexual deviant behavior in the entertainment industry. Any indication of similarities here? I, I, I think potentially. Wow. Well, to li- to li- Go ahead, sorry. Uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see, I guess, if this guy, uh, Fahim Mohammed is called as a witness in, I guess, the or if he's subpoenaed as far as the Sean Diddy comes. But, you know, also there's just a, a ton of speculation, and we already brought this up. I don't know what took uh, so long, but there's a lot of little stories coming out now with Sean Diddy Combs that there are so many similarities to the Jeffrey Epstein story with cameras hidden in all these rooms in every house that he has. Yeah, Froggy. He might be worse than Epstein, though, with the murders and stuff. But I was going to say, do you guys know why Puff Daddy and uh, J-Lo broke up? Why? Uh, Puff Daddy didn't want to be friends with Benefers. <laughs> what? Friends with Benefers? <laughs> You know, benefits, 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 huh? Benefits. Pretty good, huh? Yeah. Dude, you're Did you ro- make that up? You're rolling out like eight-year-old jokes <laughs> where like an eight-year-old thinks it's the funniest joke in the world. I know. Everybody and- has their audience. <laughs> Froggy's playing toward eight-year-olds now That's on right. the MJ Morning Show. <laughs> I love it.
Anyway, oh, April Fool's today. One other thing regarding April Fool's. Uh, some April Fool's jokes that did not go very well. Including your buddy Elon Musk, Froggy. Yes, what did I do? <laughs> did you know that Elon Musk back in, in 2018 as an April Fool's joke said that Tesla was going bankrupt? Yes. <laughs> I made the ha-ha. What, what the hell was he thinking? What, he tanked the stock price? The prank backfired immediately, causing the stock to plummet 7%. <laughs> What what He's really like? What maniac <laughs> would say that your company is going bankrupt? I'm and, a crazy man. And plummet your market value by billions. Who would do that? <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Tesla had, you know, bad news, including the prank which backfired. Uh what else was there? Oh, Volkswagen. Remember, uh, April Fool's Day 2021, Volkswagen, they said that they were changing their names, name to Volkswagen, V-O-L-T, as in Volt as an electric, to reaffirm their commitment to electric vehicles. Yeah, that didn't work out very well no. for, for Volkswagen. Uh, oh, Taco Bell. Remember they said that the Liberty Bell would now be known as the Taco Liberty Bell? Remember that? That was actually pretty funny. But there was an outcry, and then... Members of Congress called the National Park Service. Who fell for this? April 1st, back in, uh, what was it, 20, uh, 1996. 1996, Taco Bell's April Fool's prank was, uh, they, they took out a full-page ad in the Philadelphia Inquirer newspaper and also the New York Times, USA Today, about they purchased the Liberty Bell and they're renaming it the Taco Liberty Bell. And listen, this, members of Congress actually called the National Park Service to confirm that the deal was not real. Though, according to the Washington Post, who would fall for that? Did you guys hear about what Nissan's doing? What? With the Nissan Cube? They're changing the name of it. To? The Nissan Pube. Uh, all right, more, more, more jokes for eight-year-olds from, from Froggy. I think that was like an eleven-year-old joke. Maybe that, uh, that might have been fifteen, okay. fourteen, fifteen. That's yeah. right, baby. I'm yeah. killing it. Oh no, yeah, you're on fire. <laughs> Anybody else got a joke? You're okay, on, no. You're on fire. So Taco Bell. I guess there was a, there was a little bit of an outcry. Taco Bell admitted the whole thing was a hoax, and they donated, I guess, fifty thousand dollars toward the preservation of the bell, or at least they offered it. But it paid off because they say that the free publicity generated like $25 million worth of advertising. Sales increased uh, April 1st and 2nd by over half a million dollars at Taco Bell. Anyway, so some April Fool's jokes oh, uh, that have gone awry, which, again, we do not do April Fool's jokes here on the MJ Morning Show. I pulled up a list. In, in years past, Coca-Cola teased Helium Coke oh. that changes the drinker's voice. Oh, really? <laughs> That's yeah. funny. Oh, hi. Hey, really? <laughs> Burger King <laughs> put out Whopper toothpaste, and a bunch of people fell for that. A bunch of funny ones. I I'd brush my teeth with that. Yeah, right? I'm not mad at that. Wow, those are funny. As funny as your, uh, <laughs> what was that joke? Dude, about, leave, my, my stuff was funny. What, the Texas, Texas sucking yeah. or something? Why does Texas suck? Why, why does Texas, why doesn't Texas fall into the water? Are we stop from <laughs> Because terrible. Oklahoma sucks. What about New Mexico? Right, we just just stop, please. Now, what about, what about Louisiana? Right, can, can I move on, please? <laughs> the land. Right, now, one other thing regarding Elon Musk and uh, another thing that he's touched and it's turned to garbage. Now, listen, you, you can't deny that Elon Musk has had a lot of success, but uh, Twitter is not one of them. He has tanked that company. It is Twitter is a dumpster fire. The usage, the ad sales have plummeted. I mean, tens and tens of millions have just walked away from Twitter. Uh, I am one of them. And this is an example about the death of Twitter, now X, that you can take a look at the Baltimore Bridge disaster, whereas Twitter would be the first like line of breaking news. All of the serious news organizations, newspaper, television, radio, it, Twitter was it. Yeah. Now it's TikTok. Break no, it's not, it's not TikTok. <laughs> but Twitter was it for breaking news. 
all of the news organizations, people rush to Twitter to put breaking news items. Now, a couple of years later, the Baltimore Bridge collapse is a perfect example about the death of Twitter that there was an absolute uh, reduction measurable how you can just look at that one event and how few news outlets like broke news regarding the bridge. It's just just an example that Twitter was always the go-to for breaking news, and now it's not. Your thoughts, Elon? <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> I find it ironic, Elon, that yes. uh, when Twitter first came on the map, we've uh-huh. talked about this, the, yes. the thing that really launched Twitter where people started tweeting was the birds flying into the plane that crashed in the Hudson. The miracle on, on the Hudson is what launched Twitter. Your and thoughts on that? I don't believe that it's a factual <laughs> fact. I believe that it's an actual lie. I'll give Sally on the line. I got an email yesterday. <laughs> Actually, when was this email from? This email is from last week. Got an email a couple of days ago, uh, midweek last week. But I I saw this. I was going through email, and you know I'm trying to respond to everyone. I've just gotten so much email lately, so I'm trying to respond. So I might be a little late, a couple of days late, if you haven't gotten a response. But I got an email from Chris, and Chris wrote, this is last Wednesday, Hey, MJ, always hearing you preach about golf carts in South Tampa and how much uh, you think they're dangerous and how something is bound to happen. It did. And then I guess he sent me another clip about the Tampa golf cart crash critically injures one. I think we might have mentioned that last week, but he also said additionally I heard from Roosevelt Elementary parents that a child was in the cart and had to be put in a medically induced coma. Oh, no. Oh, that's, awful. that's not mentioned the, in the article. I don't know if that's true, but this was a recent South Tampa crash with a golf cart. And the reason why I bring this up again is because I saw a golf cart on West Shore yesterday, um, I'm doing my five-mile walk yesterday. Nice little Easter walk. I'm in the middle of my five-mile weekend course, and I'm walking up West Shore, a past Swan, and then as I'm crossing a zeal on the way to Cleveland to turn left right behind the international, uh, you know, the hotel thing with Intercontinental, whatever that is. So as I'm turning left or just before I turn left, uh, at a Zeal and West Shore, I see one of those long club cars, the long golf cart. Yeah. And I think there were like six or eight people on this, including little kids, Golly. some elderly folks. They are at a Zeal making a left turn onto West Shore in a golf cart. As I've just witnessed people driving... 50, 60 miles an hour in a 30-mile-an-hour zone. And this guy with, like, his whole family, like, grandparents and kids driving a golf cart north on West Shore turning off of a zeal. And I watched them. They went right into the shopping center where the Panera is and the Starbucks and was it PetSmart, Petco, whatever, where my haircut place is, Great Clips. And uh, what do you have? Uh, Not Men's Warehouse. but there in there? uh, What? Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, Barnes and Noble's now in there. That's right. Yeah, the new Barnes and Noble's in there. And I'm like, what are you doing? What you, you're driving? It's insane. Why are these people driving? The golf cart offers zero protection if you get hit by a car. They're going 45, 50, 60, even 70 miles an hour in that 30 mile an hour zone. And this guy's got his whole family on a golf cart turning out the West Shore. Insanity. Absolute insanity. 920 at the MJ Morning Show. When we get back, I've got a tow truck hookup story that it angered me. I want to run this by you. A tow truck tows a woman's car from her apartment complex, from her spot. Why did the tow truck, and it wasn't a repo. It wasn't like a middle-of-the-night repo man deal. Nope. She wasn't late on her car payments. Why was a woman's car towed from her very own parking spot where she pays an additional parking fee each month to the condo. Why was she towed? Wait till you hear the story. This just pissed me off. 
and I'll tell you next, plus a lot more. Final chunk of the MJ Morning Show is moments away here on Q105. Now, our good buddies...
Final segment on a Monday, April Fool's Day of the MJ Morning Show here on Q105. Oh, one other thing with April Fool's Day and 7-Eleven. So I pretty much believe that the, the sparkling hot dog water is just an April Fool's joke. Because they also did a beverage April Fool's joke some years ago. I think it was, what, two years ago? When did they do this? Uh, tw- yeah, two years ago, 2022. 7-Eleven announced that they were uh, releasing the Tiny Gulp. And it was like, it was 0.7 ounces. It it wasn't even an ounce. It was like a thimble. It was the Tiny Gulp. So when you just didn't have a big thirst, you could go into 7-Eleven and get the Tiny Gulp. 0.7 ounces. <laughs> Who would like believe that for a second? I know. It, so it was a dumb. joke. A- April Fool's. So uh, 7-Eleven has a, a history. 7-Eleven. Come on. Step yeah. up your jokes. Yep. Nine. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Ooh, whoa, whoa. The, I'm about to peek. What? what? I'm about to you peek. You better go to the bathroom. Oh. <laughs> You're about to puke? Peek, peek. What do you mean you're about to peak? It says my energy summary for the day. I'm a, right now 9.32. I'm about to peak, everybody. It's, not, it's, it's as good as it it's, gets. It's 9.30. Well, you're you're two, minutes two minutes away minutes. from your peak. <laughs> so, about uh, to peak in two minutes. Hold me, on. She's giving us ample time to back peak up or what? get closer. Your this energy is, peak for the day? Yeah, it's my Hold energy on, what, summary. What, what cockamamie app do you it's, have now? It's very cockamamie. It's a rise. It's called Rise. And it based on when I woke up this morning, when I went to bed, my peak is coming. It's all downhill from there. <laughs> And then I think I'm going to have a another peak around 4.56 p.m. I'm going to crash at 12.25. I usually wake up with a morning peak. <laughs> All right, Froggy, please. Just, I, my energy. What the heck? Uh, whatever. All right. Man, you know, you're, you're gutterhead. Uh, whatever. All right, I have a story that 
bothers me immensely. And then I want to know what is up with NFL players in the Tampa Bay area? Why is this like a, a dumpster fire of NFL players? What, what is going on? Well, there's another one. You know, we had uh, Antonio, we had Brown, AB, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And Antonio Brown, we had that mess. You know, Fester and I were outside his house with a megaphone. I think we helped bring an end to the situation. I think we did. This really troubled me. This I just this just made me angry. I, I had like a visceral reaction. You know the towing companies that are predatory and like they'll put up like little signs in business parking lots and they'll just yank cars out and you yeah. you know they'll tow you. It's just like a money making venture. You got companies that will just circulate and just yank cars, take them back to their uh, impound area, and then you know it's two hundred and fifty eight dollars each car out, whatever. It's it's a money-making scheme and racket. Now, listen, should you park illegally? No. Should you park in places where you shouldn't park? No. However, you know, it's still very predatory. All right. This is a woman in Texas, and I saw this, and this bothered me. She had her car towed from her spot in her apartment complex. And it comes down to a simple typo. But... Really? You should have towed the car? When when you hear what this is, come on, you're telling me that a judgment call wasn't made? So this woman had her car towed. She's been a resident in this condominium complex for 15 years and had a cough up $351. To get her car back from the towing company. Why? On the sheet that she had filled out with her car make and model. Right. She was one number off on the license plate. So the entire plate was correct, except she had a three instead of a two. Her fault, (laughs) man. Uh, Hold on a minute. That'll teach you. Hang on a minute. Do you realize what this is like? Let's say your license plate is uh, H... R M two two seven. Love that show. All right. So she put H R M two three seven. Yeah, and that um, isn't it. Yeah, two three seven uh, wasn't nearly as popular come, come on. a show. So wait, <laughs> if, if if you see if you're a tow truck driver and you have H R M two, what are the odds are that you have a. a uh, the car that's supposed to be there is HRM227, and you accidentally put HRM237. What are the odds that you've got some squatter or some illegal parker that parked in the lady's spot that's one digit off? Anyway, the tow truck yanks her. Good. What do you mean, good? He's got to do his job. What, is he going to risk his job for her? Yep. All right, come on. Anyway, the deal is... If the number doesn't match, you got to hook him and book him. Uh, that's right, it. Right. Hook and book. Haven't you seen Lizard Lick towing? What is wrong? Well, that's another one. Don't they They yank cars out of spots? Yeah, all they'll this. fight you, too. And, and don't, yeah, don't they... <laughs> don't, like, people, like, like try to, like, rev the engine to drive off oh, of yeah. the hook and everything? Oh, one of them was on the hood of a car for about a block. <laughs> <laughs> totally real. <laughs> Lizard, totally real. Isn't that like the phoniest reality? Oh, yeah. Lizard Lake Toey is like the worst fake reality show of all time, right? That's oh, the best. All right. All right. Roxanne, clearly we're dealing with unreasonable idiots here with Fester and Froggy. Do you think if you have a, a license plate, HRM 227, and she accidentally had 237, don't you think any reasonable tow truck driver would look at the list and say, uh, that's the car. And then, oh, they know the make and model of the car. It's the right make and model. One digit off because she made a typo when she wrote out on the condo complex form for authorized parking? Come on. Okay, not to offend everyone in the tow truck business, but isn't that kind of their MO? Like, they're they're sticklers. Yeah. Yeah. It's their job. It's their, they're doing their job. And for anybody who wants to know, 227 is available on Amazon Prime, <laughs> where not only can you uh, experience the fantastic American actress Marley Gibbs. It was a Sherman li- Helmsley. Sh- uh, no, no, no. That's it, Amen. It, it was a oh. license plate. I'm Jack not talking K. about the TV show. Jack Hay. Jack Hay. That's premiere. Right. That's the first time I ever saw Jack uh, Hay. See, well, I wouldn't have made that mistake because my birthday is 227. No. Yeah. 237. No. $351 is what she had to pay to get her car back because of one digit off. I'm sorry. That is unreasonable. Is it? It is what it is. It is unreasonable. Not if you want your car back. Unfreaking reasonable. Yeah, it's unreasonable. 
Uh, if you haven't heard about our little uh, Madonna clock watch game, this is actually really cool. How'd you like to win a $1,000 gift certificate, a gift card to IDC, International Diamond Center? So here's the deal. Madonna's coming to town this week. Remember the show was originally last September. Yeah, like September 7th. And, and remember she collapsed. She was sick. She was ill. Everything was postponed. Madonna's back around, and Madonna will be performing at Amelie Arena. The show is sold out. You got resale tickets available for some pretty high prices. But Madonna is sold out this Thursday night at Amelie. However, there have been some issues with, uh, hey, Fester, go to YouTube quickly. Sure. Go to YouTube and top, type in Madonna Brooklyn Late Lawsuit. Madonna Brooklyn Late Lawsuit. Because Madonna has been notoriously late. Now, the show is scheduled to start at 8.30. There is an opening act for a little bit. Go to, find me the, hold, no, no, I'll, I'll take it. Find the Fox 5. That's the most concise. So, Madonna has been notoriously late uh, for the concert. Yeah, here we go. Listen to this. Let me bring this uh, story up here from Fox 5 in New York. Material girl showed up more than two hours late to her own concert in Brooklyn last night. Fox Eye Jennifer Williams talked to several people who were at the show and patiently waited it out. Uh, so uh, people sued. Some sued, like trying to do a class action. Madonna's late two and a half hours. And some people left. So the question is, the material girl is coming to Tampa this Thursday night. The show time is set for 8.30, but there is a quick opening act. What time will Madonna take the stage? It's the MJ Morning Show Q105 Madonna Concert Clock Watch. You can go to mjmorningshow.com. Look for the Madonna Clock Watch graphic and enter your guess. Just fill out the form. What time do you think Madonna will take the stage? Uh, Gino's going to be there, our afternoon guy, so he'll have the exact time. He has the atomic clock on his uh, cell phone, so we'll have the exact time. So this is easy. This is like this is as easy a contest. What time, if the concert's set for 8.30, what time will Madonna actually walk out on stage? If you get the answer correct or the closest to it, you win a $1,000 gift card to International Diamond Center. You enter right now, mjmorningshow.com, and then look for the Madonna graphic, and then fill out the form, and good luck. And in the event that people get the the same guess, and uh, you know, and there's a, a tie with you know two, three, four, uh, there'll be just a random drawing to pick whoever the winner is. So, good luck. It's the Madonna concert clock watch from the MJ Morning Show. I have a question. Uh, and Q105. Yes. Now, what if Madonna? Do we know if she has an opening act? Yes, MJ I just said there's a, said she, a dude, brief opening act. Who is it? It's some. I think. Uh, I think it's a some comedian act in drag or something. Or so, at least, or, or so. Isn't that going to throw off your game? No, <laughs> it's when Madonna takes the stage. Okay, yeah, the opening yes. act comes out on time, does their spiel, their shtick, whatever. And then, the thing and then is Madonna, Madonna shut it down for like two and a half hours in Brooklyn, and she didn't show up uh, for like two and a half hours or something. So that was the story. So what time is Madonna going to walk out? Hmm. No, nothing difficult about that. So you enter right now. It's Bob. Is Bob the Drag Queen the opening act here? Uh, I typed into Google Madonna's opening act, and it says Bob the Drag Bob, Queen. See, wow. I, yeah, Bob, I wasn't making that up. That Bob, sounds awesome. Bob the dra Drag Queen. All right, what is going on with the NFL here in the Tampa Bay area? This is the NFL. The Dark Underbelly. Just seems that we have like a, a rampant uh, like influx of like sports issues here in the Tampa Bay. Remember, Daryl Strawberry was uh, busted here for picking up a hooker. Remember, remember? Oh, I remember. I think, yeah, arrested for coke possession. Oh, all, all kinds of stuff. Good old then, then you have uh, Antonio Brown and Antonio Brown, AB, and Tom Brady and Giselle took him in. And then he turned on them like like a, a rabid pit bull. He could have been our tenant. He was holed up in his house. That's right, AB. Didn't he look at one mm -hmm. of your houses? He did. Yeah, You're lucky. Look, look at one of Roxanne and Big Doug's uh, rental houses. You've been flipping so, that thing. So then he was wanted. He had a warrant out for his arrest. He wouldn't come out of his South Tampa home. 
His black uh, Rolls Royce SUV was parked in the driveway, wouldn't come out. The TPD had his house under surveillance. There were rumors that he had, you know, guns inside. So I don't know what's going on with the NFL and the Tampa Bay area. The latest now is this Lions player. Well, former, because they fired him because he abused a woman. Uh, former Detroit Lions player Cameron Sutton, he turned himself, uh, hey, happy Easter, Cameron. Uh, he turned himself into the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office uh, yesterday, Easter Sunday, last night, 8.24 p.m. They've been looking for him for oh, yeah. a, a week or so, a couple he, weeks. Yeah. So he was released by the Detroit Lions, but he showed up at the Orient Road Jail, turned himself in, and he's wanted for domestic battery by strangulation. Jeez. What the hell? So what happened in this case? Hillsborough County Sheriff's deputies, they arrived uh, earlier uh, in March, on March 7th, up in Lutz. And they found a woman who was beaten by Sutton in the home up in Lutz, probably just a stone's throw from Fester's palace. Yeah. And then they have not been able to find him. He fled the scene. So from March 7th, where she calls and says she was strangled. Obviously, she didn't die, but she was strangled by this uh, former Detroit Lions player, and he's on the run for the last you know three weeks or so and finally turned himself in. Yeah, the Detroit Lions, they cut him. They fired him. They released him about 10 days ago on March 21st after the arrest warrant was issued for Sutton, they said, yeah, we don't want these shenanigans on our team. And they, they got rid of them. Yeah, we became aware of the ongoing legal situation involving Cam Sutton this morning. Uh, the Lions gave a statement to WFLA Channel 8. We will continue to monitor the situation and will not have any further comment at this time. Yeah. Uh, on March 25th, uh, the attorney for this guy said that uh, he was traveling to Tampa to turn himself in. So what? He did the loot strangulation, then he fled town, not, then he had to come back. After evading uh, for uh, weeks, Chad Cronister, Sheriff, Hillsborough County, said after weeks of evading law enforcement, this man has finally made the right choice to turn himself in. Domestic violence has no place in our community. No one's above the law here in Hillsborough County. My thoughts are with this woman as she continues to heal from this man's gruesome actions. But again... We just have like a history of just professional athletes behaving badly in the Tampa Bay area. I don't know what the hell it is. Have fun in jail, Sutton. Yeah. So that's where I don't know if he bonded out. I, I guess he if he uh, went in last night. He, yeah, sure. He probably, probably probably bonded out. Probably bonded out. Yeah. So, all right, folks. I think that's going to put the wraps on another spectacular edition of the MJ Morning Show. Yeah. Don't fall for any April Fool's jokes today. I was really looking forward to an ice cold glass of hot dog water. Oh yeah. Have they announced that 7 Eleven said April Fools on the hot dog water? Ooh, oh, I gotta talk to you about something after the show, MJ. Me? Yeah. All Is right. it involving an April Fool's prank? No. It's involving a possible product. Oh, really? All right. Well, folks, <laughs> we'll see you back here tomorrow. Have a fantastic day. And we'll see you back here tomorrow on the MJ Morning Show on Q105. And let's be careful out there.